foul is going to be whistled, which will send Cottrell Pope, the junior out of North Pope, Alabama. And that's who we've been waiting line. to see. Yeah. He is a double double machine, averages 14 points and 12 rebounds. Maybe he was late for shoot around this morning, John. <laughs> Whatever. There he goes. Missed the free throw, though. Missed them both, but gets the rebound. Loses his balance. And Cole is fouled by Wally Parks. You cannot leave freebies at the line, Mr. Pope. Howard sneaking out to a five-point lead. With 11 minutes to go. First half from the scope here in Norfolk. And it's going to be Howard's ball off of the hands of one of the Bethune Cookman defenders. This Bethune Cookman team was averaging 74 points a game. Howard 79 points a game. They led the conference in scoring, and you see why with the play of travel. Is going to be the call and the turnover. Akubovo shuffled his feet. Savia. The savior. The savior. I was going to say, you see why Miak leading scoring team was Howard University. Right, no doubt. They got three great perimeter players in Locke, Williams, and saving the best for last, RJ Cole. And Cole, of course, led the conference in scoring also. Down the lane, there's the drive, knocked away by inside. Big hands by Zion Cousins to knock that one away. The dish off from Cole and it's buried by Charles Williams. That's great teamwork. Well, not no doubt. Nice transition outfit. Shot it in rhythm. And there again, it talks about the unselfishness of Cole because he could have very well taken that shot, but he decided to give it to his teammate. Meanwhile, at the other end, to throw both. The defensive player of the year decides he's got some offense too. <laughs> right. They want to show you guys something. <laughs> Over the years, and you coached there as an assistant many years as Savior Akubobo comes out with a basket. As an assistant to A.B. Williamson, you saw a lot of great players come through Howard University over the years. Guys like Larry Spriggs and Kyle Williams. The, that's the first miss. It was a, tried to be a little layup by R.J. Cole. The pull-up jumper, that's going to be short. We're talking about our 1981 team was the first HBCU. He didn't miss that one. And he used that, his right hand that time. <laughs> he is putting on an offensive exhibition. Nine but, point lead for Howard University with 9.02 to go. And R.J. Cole six of seven from the field. Perfect from three-point land, and he has 16, 15 points on the board. He has more points than the opposition. I right tell you now. what, he's putting on the show. <laughs> Six of seven, two assists, two rebounds, three for three from long distance. Our officials for tonight's game is Wade Crawford, Everett Summers, Manny Upton. Of course, Manny Upton, the father of the Upton boys in Major League Baseball. Saw them when they were playing with the Atlanta Braves. Maitland down the lane has it taken away. Ahead. And a foul is going to be whistled against Diakiti.
as Howard is off to a great start offensively. They're shooting 55% from the field, 50% from the three line. A lot of that has to do with the play of R.J. Cole, MEAC Player of the Year. Charles Williams going to the free throw line. 6'6", junior out of Richmond, Virginia, went to Millwood School. 86% free throw shooter. Second, number two in scoring in the conference, right behind his teammate, R.J. Cole. I tell you what, uh, he's not a bad number two. Second in the conference in free throw percentage. That deep range shoots a high arc and jump shot. We welcome you on this Saturday afternoon to Orangeburg, South Carolina, to Dawson on that Stadium, where Flow Football brings you Maniac Clash between the Pirates of He had 11 and points the in the first time South these two Carolina teams State. met in Let's Washington, D.C. In, in the season. game that they of lost, course, but he had 20 Maniac down in Daytona Carolina, Beach when they beat the Thune Cookman on the road. When we see the trail, Pope is now on the bench again. Looks like he might have got poked in the eye. Looking up at the rest of the standings, South Carolina State sitting on one and four, looking for a home win. Here From the corner, senior day. three ball, no good. Battle around, and Howard comes up with it. We talk about this MEAC clash late in the season. R.J. Cole. Player of the year in the conference. Down the lane. This is off. Good vision. Missed, though. Got to finish those, Zion Cousins. Maitland reverse. No. Won't fall. Chad Lott brings it in the front court for Kevin Nickelberry in his 12th year. Travel is the call and turnover. Nickelberry out of Virginia Westland. He spent three years as the head coach at Hampton University back in 06 and 09. He replaced Gil Jackson at Howard University as the head coach there. Nick was an assistant for two years at UNC Charlotte, three years at Clemson. Yes. We'll be back with more with eight minutes to go and a 10 point lead for Howard. Inside their 20, Eight minutes left before men are mission here at the scope in Norfolk, Virginia. And a 10-point advantage for the Bison of Howard University. We talked about Ryan Ritter, who's the head coach over at Bethune Cookman in his second year. A graduate of Emory Riddle University. He played for his dad in 2008, Steve, at uh, Emory Riddle, and is an was an assistant coach there at Emory Riddle before taking over the head spot at Bethune Cookman. And you talk to Lynn Thompson, the athletic director at Bethune Cookman. He's been knowing him since he was a little kid. Right, right. Grew up right around the Bethune Cookman campus. Yeah, and you know what? It's not the size, it's the patience. And Howard went to a box and won that last time. And Chantrez Davis buried the three. Pull the team within seven. 7.34 to go. We talk about some great coaches down in Daytona Beach. That one by C.J. Williams is short. But they get it back. First three missed by R.J. Cole. In and out of the hands of Chantrez Davis. Probably going to have to leave a lot of havoc. Here comes Bethune Cookman. Block inside. Big man just put his hand up there, and that was Prince Anasiki. Got a block party going on here. And he's going to the sideline right now, and uh, Wally Parks is going to come in and replace him. So Cole, one field goal miss, one three point miss. And still leading and everybody in scoring with 15 points. Final home game of the regular season at Dawson Stadium in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Yeah, Again, Lock, a MEAC clash. Who's 13 Over the years, one of the best programs, he, but some road bumps this year for the Bulldogs. Still is that, is to go third out in style with their 16th option. year head coach, percent free throw shooter. Make their way out of the Teams locker room for the score. final home game. We mentioned Red Shirt Junior senior from day, high school band Freeport, day, Louisiana, product of Rice High there. And of course, also military. Missed three games in late December. Veterans Day weekend. But did score well, trifecta, 14 points in the first meeting against this Bethune Cookman squad. The of the and South five Carolina in the second one. He's one for two at the line. Nonetheless, they've got to win a football game against a very good Hampton Pirates football team. 
Yeah, this is a pirate squad that you talk about. Their only losses have come from Bethune Cookman and North Carolina Central. That but those flat. were their last two games. So these pirates are also looking to bounce back here late in the season. They need to because if they're going to stay in the hunt, they'll stick with the one three one. That's what they have to do is win conference. You know that. And right now, all so across the line, back to Carolina the Cole. Cole the trying gentlemen. to get to a spot. Dips it inside, uh, this game and it's on a sinking. Has it knocked away? The pull up jumper won't fall this time for Bethay. Raymond Bethay Jr., freshman out for Atlanta City, New Jersey. South Carolina State next week will close up their schedule on the road. Spin in the lane, a nice move. Basket by Houston Smith. Junior out Columbus, Ohio. Nice spin that time. Way to attack the basket. Houston Smith sticking with the 1 3 1, trying to throw the bison off rhythm. Under six to go. All the way across to RJ Cole. Down low. The three ball doesn't fall. And out of bounds. Zion Cousins couldn't get it to go. So we have a couple substitutions coming into the Howard University lineup right now. Jalen Jones checks back in. How we get things started here as a Savior. Opening quarter. We will see the offense first. For Buddy Pugh's Bulldogs again. Talk about Buddy Pugh move. and South Carolina Back State over the years. Working down low defensively. Watch. 14 conference titles in the history of the Bulldogs program. John Trez Davis was trying to post him coaches, up there. Of course, Connor Battle Maynard for the loose ball, and it comes down to Houston Pirates. Smith. North Carolina A and T grad, but they down have down the lane. Given him by Pulls now. up. Shot. No good. Got up. Board is cleared you know, uh, by Cousins. Talk about coaches where they started as a player and then they. Uh, Score the basket. They call goals in contracts. Nice pass that time. Rivalries by RJ Cole to Raymond Bethay Jr. So again, Hampton up, will be kicking it off to, it to a Bulldogs and, uh, offense see, that this year think, is averaging 20 points per ball game. Pope. Now sitting near the coach, so he may be conceding about, about 21 ready to come points. Should be a good game this evening. Always is when you talk He's about up, the Miak. Going to the score uh, table. Close affairs over the years. Yeah, you know these teams. Uh, of course, just like any other conference, see each other every Great year. Great defense by the Bison. And another turnover for Bethune Cookman, who averaged just about 16 turnovers of contest. Howard University did a better job of protecting the ball throughout the season. Only 12.4 turnovers per game. ball teed up, set to go here in Orange Park, South Carolina. You have a stellar point guard. You keep the ball in his hands, let him make the, the right decisions, let him make the play, whether the play is for him to take the shot or the play is, you know, he reminds me a little bit of, we're getting a our weekend of James football Martin underway from the Houston Rockets. He got, he got rings, a beard. And he got a beard too. You know, <laughs> chest is. I thought it was because he was left hand. The and he can shoot. The man was just because he got a beard. field position. Ball is loose. Howard and there was just Miak one bulldog in the, the area. Last one was Numbers not in favor of South Carolina State. That was also the last time but they won a regular season title. And, and I tell you, one of his Achilles heels from person has been his inability to make free throws down the crust. They lost several games this year because he's at the line to close it out. And for whatever reason, set up their he, he missed. Around the and he's an 82% free you, throw shooter. He hits both of them that time. Shown as a shot key looks really good of right the game or and keys to the game, but you team team have to possess the football. A 10-point advantage. Person on the spin Equally their biggest lead of the night. 29-19 with 445 to go. First half. In that pile, but he comes up with Wally the Parks. Yes, and uh, the fortuitous bounce off of the lineman. For the South Carolina Bulldogs. A lot of contact down there, and they're the going to call get back on the going football the other way. Coach Ritter takes the coat off. That foul is going to get both. The junior out of North Port, for Alabama. South Carolina State. He, he didn't think that the one four. Pope should have been called for that foul. He didn't really think he went over his back. He thought he used his athleticism to go get it, but uh, Craig Crawford saw it something. Nice chunk of change, and the football comes different. out, and this time, the Pirates do have it. Against Bethune, only three. Ford with a nice seven-yard gain. The They're on half. first down, but look at that. he goes and that's down, huge. That's the skin comes loose, and right into the arms of Robert Scott. Well, it was a great decision to maintain possession of the ball from the quarterback. But as he's going to the ground, uh, the Pirates just 
take an attempt to strip the ball so and rip it, the and they sure line. did, and the it's ball comes the out. It will be the Pirates' ball the one and one. on the 45-yard line for the 64% free throw shooter. This is their biggest the lead of the night, field. the 433 to go. I believe it was Tyler Frazier. The Pirates' defense able to strip that ball loose. And he makes them both. Pressure from the blind side, gets the pass off downfield and just two yards or so beyond the intended receiver zone. in all the night. Like the opportunity to go for the quick strike because the first two plays of this ball game, a uh, ball was on the turf and the Hampton Pirates have been uh, trying to get it and uh, they finally possess it on the Smith second opportunity. To get it down low. The first play from uh, Cole uh, scrimmage for pocket. the offense of South Carolina and there uh, wanted to take the shot to be up the quick six. Cole is averaging less than up six deals seven here for, your for contest. Delman Williams. Nice little mid-range shot that time Toss by Cousins. Into the flat. Just missed it. Everything else after the catch a little better than a four-yard gain Double as team. he connects with out Ronald there on the Bell. Corner on Bell. Your third year sophomore out of Fort Washington, Maryland. Your leading receiver this year making his 53rd snag. For the Coach is all the way out at midcourt. Wants to talk to the referee. You know, I'm not sure what the kicking game may look like today because of the conditions on the field. Nonetheless, an opportunity to pick up a first down. Williams this time rolls left. Good protection. Looking for that first down marker. The receiver was Chase Powell, but could not connect. This could be an interesting decision for Coach Maynard because you're somewhat in that no man's land unless you have a guy that can make 50 plus yard field Back goals. Back in the scope so in Norfolk, Virginia, where the Howard University the Bison, Bison even though it's enjoying early, their biggest lead of the night field, over the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman, a 12 point advantage see if you can pick up with first down four, making 355. A couple of incomplete exactly passes left to the first half of play. They need the 30 with Sire Alexander, a former assistant coach at Howard, former head coach at South Carolina State. Five I'm Charlie Neal. Glad you could join us here on Floyd Sports for exciting me at basketball. Play. It's tournament time. Left. And the turnaround by Sabio. Almost intercepted. Would have gone the other this way for the pick He's going to go to the line for two. Great Part coverage. Reason, Charlie, Again, from that, that Bulldogs secondary. And the Bulldogs pick the things up after the offense and committed the turnover at midfield. In the first half. Yeah, and I know that Coach Ritter is not three the best. They've got to take care of the basketball. That's what I was talking about earlier in our opening about them being disciplined. they got big time athletes. But sometimes uh, they don't the play with them themselves. They try to do more than they're capable of doing. Uh, when you talk about those 12 turnovers that scored by the translated into the 10 points for Howard Adams, University. Exactly. Had that interception. And they have a, Instead, a little above a the 10-point lead. on downs, of course, sets up the Bulldogs, essentially where they coughed up the football on Hope's their last drive. second run. free throw does go for him. Wordle handed off some hard running, and the ball comes out again. 3.49 to go. Unbelievable. RJ Cole I would never up. believe that three. RJ just a soft two handoffs, three possession, one from the kickoff. Down the lane, all the way. The floater doesn't go. Out. And, and uh, the rebound very by Pope. Characteristic for any level of football. Uh, again, it seems that the South Carolina State driving inside the Akiti uh, again possessed the football. So they're two Back out of three. But Lincoln, to that's Collins. not how you Down want low. to play Both a football game. Holding it high. All over the he's going to drive inside. And the Bulldogs loses now two for three on recovery. And he's going to be fumbles here in the open. Couple of minutes, and they're gonna call that foul. Maybe you want to pass on because right now, rushing the ball has not been uh, the Pope going back to the free throw line where he's one for two his last, last trip there. Into points, got a chance to cut it to single, single digits. As he finds the Montrez Burroughs, this is his fifth counted six free throw attempt tonight. Out of he's only made one. If I'm Coach Ritter, I'm gonna stick with this one three one zone. That just takes away all what it does. It keeps Howard I have the ball in from really arms, ex it executing the half court option the right because there. now basically they got to try to, to play the around First and the ten one three one and they got great length Bulldogs with still uh, Pope at the top the of that zone. Chance to score first again, running up the middle, and this time the football will stay in the arms of the tailback, LeBron Morris. LeBron did a great job there of falling. Savio will go to the bench. He has two personal fouls right now. And then they don't want him to pick end, up his third before halftime. He's replaced by Andre Torre, freshman out of Paris, France, knows all in the lineup. Wearing number one, 305 to go. He drives down the lane, back out to R.J. Cole. Was handing you that football. And he would be very upset if I uh, Three minutes it to go. gave it to anyone except the guys Wide that uh, were black and white stripes. Just a little bit too hard. This didn't fall that time, but Chad he had the clean look. 
Boy, the defense swallows Take it away. First man for Hampton in Torrey on the tackle. And his hands in there. Are they cold? Close to the coast. Six, three, Back out the cold. Out of Gaffney, South Carolina. Not forcing anything. Almost a perfect size because that's Torre. Uh, height, that's uh, length. Baseline speed, jumper, no good. Off the hands of Charles C.J. Williams. Running back for four. See, that's, what that's, that's what I'm talking Rocks about back. right there. And we'll air it out downfield, one on Torre. two, and it'll simply he go missed. out of bounds. And They're missing chip shots the at his Howard Hampton. University. But those are making sure that ball is really disciplined. Nigel they could Thomas, be a much better rusher. team if they had a little more like offensive discipline. And two big turnovers. A much more difficult throw. But as long as you can avoid And Howard's a little more disciplined means they just missed chip uh, shots. Right, they just missed chip shots. Can, These guys are throwing, the just, just throwing stuff field. that really make, to me. Gonna bring a first down with it. Offense. And a 15-yard penalty, not spot foul, but 15 yards. They're a team a that is very with talented with athletes, well, because but they're undisciplined the in the way they play. For, uh, so player control foul against both. Be awarded to the South Carolina State Bulldogs offense. Substitution into the Howard line at Torre. We'll go to the sideline. It's a Bulldogs Good offense minutes there year. for Coach Kevin Nickelberry, Jalen Jones, redshirt senior from Kenton, North Carolina. Will come back in. Situation like this one after did not play when they played Howard down in Daytona Beach three against the Wildcats, but three did play the first that, meeting. Cookman. Had three points. It's the opportunities they've overcome. Three fumbles so far. Right. Have a chance to take the and lead. And a foul is going to be whistled. Ford, the quarterback. And the Bison doing an excellent job right now in attacking get the, hand the one off three one you time, hit high. But it'll be a loss of a pair. The looks to the opposite zone block. Had a chance. That time they well, got it down to. That was the most difficult offensive play uh, that's been run by South Carolina State. Jones, State. He's Kudos, going to free throw uh, line. To the Bulldogs that they maintain possession because foul. right there. Six minute the Hampton right. Irish minute 36 is the time remaining. That jet sweep. Blew it up in the backfield and still Jones the ball the free possessed throw. by South Carolina State. He's and uh, they still have an opportunity at like, for 24 second, at the free throw line. Smith this year. for Hampton had gotten in that backfield. So they don't even have, may a, have received the handoff. A percentage for that. It's psychological. Look at that one. And then and that, that, one, that one didn't count. Down. We'll throw it out of bounds. Third and 15 coming up for the Bulldogs. Pirates still with a chance to force a field goal try. Good coverage there by the Pirates in their now secondary. Really in no the lineup place for to Howard the University the right now. Is that Ford did not force the ball facing C.J. Williams? He did make the second one. Just throw the ball out of bounds. That's a big and, deal uh, for Taylor. It is. He smacked to, himself uh, in the chest. Gain a first down. Got Still, it done. The Bulldogs can get closer if not uh, anything else. Attempt the field goal. About a 45-yard field goal. Their longest this year is 39. I said two for 24. Let me Looking correct down you. Field it wasn't that bad. It was 12 for 44. Somehow that goes in. Goes in maybe the the basket to Wally again. Barnes. If they were to try this field goal, again, the athleticism would be the longest. And I, I just wish this Baton team was just a little more disciplined within the, a really good how they protection. play because they got uh, talent. But also, but they don't play very the smart. Defensive line from the Hampton Pirates that didn't give up in trying to. Uh, Still put pressure on the quarterback. Off. I think the punt union is going to come out and try to pooch punt this ball inside the 20 yard line to make it a very long CJ Williams so about to come back in. No one was open in the second. So far today, he's uh, five have points, two for six, over one from the three. The and he'll replace Jalen Jones. Not a lot of real estate. Redshirt senior there against to the North the Carolina. And it's going Under to hit a minute right to go before halftime. So the Pirates who saw the Bulldogs fumble the ball three times could only fall on nine, it once were held scoreless. Nine point for Howard University. For second and now the tip in that time by Zion Cousins. Zone. And that's what you nice. want. Nice follow up with some rebound by Zion Cousins. To the end of the nice tip in. South Carolina Bulldogs and what you want to score. And right now, I haven't seen a lot from the Hampton Pirates here. Now it's an 11 point lead for the Bison with 46 seconds to go before the break. I do not like the sideline passing to wide receivers. It's been all Howard University since the outset. They've led by as many as 12 points in this game. They've led by 12 with 4.33 to go. Possibly with a three and out for a short field and another opportunity and attempt to score a touchdown. If you're the Hampton coaching staff, I imagine this week you're keeping your players attention by saying 
we don't expect to just roll into South Carolina State. This Bethune Cookman team has never easy won. Win. This is a Bulldog team. Tournament. Of They've their been five in the championship game. This year, of their six, pardon me, losses this year. In fact, the last time Only they were there was 2012 when they scores. lost to right. Norfolk and, uh, State. That's what I say. I think one and of the keys to get an South opportunity to State knock off those Spartans the tomorrow. Zone. But they're going to have to get by this Power University team here today. Right. Four point or five point wins. Manny Upton with the call. Okay. Nice Pinned drive back that time here, by Mike Delman Williams. 56% pass of this situation. year. Was Andre touchdowns. Torre. He'll stay conservative. The young man out of right now. Paris, France. They carry for a loss of one. A good penetration there up front by the South Carolina and State Maitland Bulldogs. And Maitland at the line, and, uh, an 86% free throw shooter. Minus one on first down. That's a big win for the defense. And that's his and fourth again, point of the night. Uh, inside first the 10 free throw line. attempt. Uh, two more downs in this South Carolina State well, Bulldogs. Well, the young man, he's the averaging 13.7 points per really contest. Put points on the board in this first quarter. All carrier with Shy he's McKenzie. The transfer here. from Virginia Tech. And if They'll go back to McKenzie, and McKenzie the gets the ball get one at the one-yard line. Ten seconds to try to get another shot. The end zone, but able to avoid the safety. Yeah, that's two they great plays to there, nine. Uh, by big number 79 for the South Carolina State Bulldogs. And, 30 seconds uh, left. I tell you, seven second difference front, between so the game and shot clock for the home team, and it's third and 14. This Cole. is great. If you're a little South give and go, forward progress has him closer nice to runner. about the two yard line. You see, and finished by deep in the end zone. If he takes this hand off, good hand, good Williams. finish. They do give it to McKenzie. He's out of the end zone. Picks up a couple. Let's see if Maitland can get something going be before the break. Out of their end Four zone, seconds on the clock. Back to the Bulldogs. The defense comes through once again. And that's going to be the end of the first half of play. Thirty-six on the board for the Bison of Howard University. Twenty-five. For the Does Wildcats of Bethune Cookman, an 11 point advantage the ball at the break. After about a two -yard we'll be back game, with our halftime activities in just more a moment. Than 10, probably 11 or 12. Experience. A good opportunity for the South Carolina State Bulldogs to get his first score after this punt. Adam Brown, they will say, stepped out the back of the end Great zone. And that is action, a 36 touchdown. 26 25, and it's yeah, Bethune Cookman trailing. Pardon me, that is a safety. The first two points. Here by yes, Marquisha Snaver from it Home Depot. The He's a pro the project a great manager for marketing the ball based in Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome to Norfolk. First of all, tell us a little bit about your company and Home Depot. We know what Home Depot basically does, but, and, but how does it set you apart from some of your competitors? Yes, thank you. Well, we're welcome to Home Depot. Thank you for having me here. 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 Thank you for Located all across the country. Um, you'll find us in all 50 states, um, the U.S. territories, Guam, uh, USBI, Mexico, Canada. We're everywhere. What sets us apart is that we are basically um, uh, the authority, the know how for home improvement. Um, so we're here to help all of our consumers day in and day out. Um, all the pros, the DIYers, get started on those projects that they have. Um, and make sure that we can get you started, get you completed in those projects. And then, um, you know, more importantly, why I'm here today is to represent uh, the Retool Your School program with the Home Depot. It's a campus improvement uh, grant program for HBCU, so we're definitely happy to be here for MEAC today. Well, I was going to say, why do you feel it's important to, yep. to partner with the Middle Eastern Athletic Conference? We feel it's important, uh, definitely uh, because of MEAC's history. Um, and and their continued support for HBCUs is why we are um, driven every day um, at the Home Depot with the Retool Your School program. Annually, we're giving uh, grants to HBCUs to improve their campuses, and this year marks our 10th anniversary. We're um, going bigger than ever. Uh, we're 10 years in strong, and we're granting uh, $500,000 total this year to HBCUs. And everyone will tell you we talk to presidents, beat, athletic directors, yep. that HBCUs are always, can always use some financial, uh, some financial yeah, assistance. Yeah. It's great.
great that you were able to do that. We're really excited. So that's fifty thousand dollars to ten schools this year. Well, that's great. Have you had a chance to participate in some of the other events going on around the tournament? I have not just yet, but I'm really enthused about everything going on. I just arrived a few hours ago here, rallying everybody as they come in. Get excited. Vote for your favorite HBCU at ReTourSchool.com. You can vote continuously as many times as you want through April 15th um, and also through social media. This is March Madness as they talk about yep. how much of a sports a fan you are <laughs> on your side of the business, but what does March today. Madness mean to Home Depot? March Madness is really all about preparing for the spring. So, you know, there are certain things that you can't do while it's, you know, post-holiday. You're waiting for that nice weather. You want to get outdoors. So we're going to make sure that we always have that right product offering when you need it to get started with um, anything from lawn care to renovation products indoor with paint. So we're just getting excited and getting ready, getting our store set for the spring time. Well, it's a great honor for you to be here and a pleasure to have a chance to spend some time with you. And we thank Home Depot for their support of HBCUs and the MEAC in particular. And we thank you for being here with us at halftime. And Lisa Tell, Home Depot, project manager for marketing. And she's based in Atlanta with the stores all over the place. Oh, yeah. We'll be back with more of our halftime activities from the scope of normal. As it looks like the ball is on the two yard line One. of the Hampton Pirates and a quarterback switch uh, for the Bulldogs. 36 25 our Rucker. score here at halftime at Stoke and Norfolk. But Phil Cookman with it. Cuts in and the Bulldogs are there. in the end zone here on Cedar Day. Thanks to a 17 with the extra point pending in the opening quarter. R.J. Cole, the you know, MIAC player of the year. He also has a score six, six, but they're back to four. Two because of the safety on the and four snap in the end zone by the Pirates, uh, which uh, forced the punter to step on the end line. Two complimentary there. Then the free kick back to the Bulldogs, and now they promptly turn that into six points on back the ground. Back here at the First scope in Atlanta. The air from the and, 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 and oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's late. <laughs> 36 25. We're in Norfolk, Virginia. Is our score at halftime? Howard University with an 11 point advantage as we get ready to start the second half. Checking out some of the highlights of the first half. Basically, it's been RJ Cole, the player of the year, offensively for Howard University. And what a show he put on 17 points. And not only the 17 points, but four assists. I tell you what, and he was doing it, Charlie, what I like, within the flow of the offense. He wasn't. Trying to be a ball ball, he passed the ball, giving it up. I just thought he had an outstanding first half. He played like he was the Minnesota Athletic Conference Player of the Year. John Trez Davis led the Bethune Cookman Wildcats in scoring with nine points. He also was able to grab five rebounds. He also got some help from Wally Parks, who grabbed uh, five rebounds, and you have. The Coach, player defensively uh, of the year as Patrell Pope. He has six rebounds and four points. But the most important stat I think what we've seen in the first the half Carolina is the State. fact that yeah, 15 turnovers for Basil Cookman and Howard University season. able to convert them into 11 points. And the fact the that the Akante has four fouls, that means he's got to sit. And he's a big claw in the Wildcats scheme of things. He may have to sit for 10 minutes before Coach Ritter can bring him back in. And he's a, he was a starter. Let's see what Coach Ritter does. In fact, Changed with the tempo his second half starting lineup, second, as you said, the defense has done very well for them. Uh, is the defense is not in the lineup to Pope start the second half. But Pope, who did not start right. the game, right. is we'll in the lineup for the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman. And let's see if Hampton he's having any issues with his eyesight. Because I think he was poked in the eye. Looked like they were trying to get his contact lenses corrected or whatever. Houston Smith, Chantrez Davis will inbound the ball to start the second. Second half for the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman. East and also in the lineup, Armani Collins. So everybody starting that started the game with the exception of Diakati. Good coverage by the Bulldogs. Maitland Midway is the point guard. He'll bring it across the timeline. Uh, safety, a touchdown, and extra point the second for the Bulldogs. Half with an 11-point advantage for Howard University. For the first time to protect. 
It's knocked away. R.J. Cole had his hand on it, and it is batted away, and it's in the hands of R.J. Cole. Dishes off to C.J. Williams. City College, and have the option. That is good. Keep it. They were trying to get about a two -yard goal tending on the defense that time down the floor. You know, Lincoln, that's not like the, the way you want to start the second half when first down you're chilling if you're the Wildcats. The so anything less than that, and this is because uh, their biggest defense. lead is a 13 point eight. advantage. It's not impossible, but and again, it's the Wildcats the have elite down athleticism. You, they just got to figure out how to use it correctly. Closer to a three yard gain here. Second and seven. This time, picks up the personal foul and never a chance. Houston Smith at the line right now. Big men up front, not just winning the line of scrimmage on offense, but also on defense now for the Bulldogs. Now we talk about 10 from the linebacker position, but also 34 in the front line of the Bulldogs. Swarming for the one, three, one, under the Pirates court trap. rusher. Out, of course, Deshaun Taylor, Misses the second one. Fifth year senior and he has three points. Georgia. Great leader on this defense this is the one, three, when you one. talk to his head coach. And right now, uh, three receivers up top, two. The pull-up jumper uh, off the back the of the iron. And, you Strong know, rebound backfield means by Sean Trez Davis. Draw or some type of Houston quick pass. Smith Third all the way. The line. Looking for the first down here. Down the nice sideline, almost intercepted by, by Alex Brown. He Alex Brown just got in the hip pocket of the receiver. The he knew the ball was going to have to be to released up. fairly quick because Solid of the good up, up front attack. pressure by the Bulldogs. One, three, one and right there, uh, I he's in better position uh, than the wide out they there. they got to get the hands Number up. they got to be big. Hampton Pirates and almost makes an interception. But the reason why those guys are deep is because they don't catch it well. I know that's a running up. joke, but nonetheless, a great uh, defensive stop CJ here. CJ Cole, the three. Cole denied again the intended in receiver the in time for the Pirates. To punt this football by game. Charles. CJ Williams, not in their own end Nice athleticism. Get it off cleanly by CJ Williams. Not only can he shoot the three, and but the he can jump. the ball is on the turf. It's muffed, <laughs> and Hampton will there, have it. No doubt. That ball looked Inside like Inside of Bulldogs territory at the well 39. Well, going in originally. You, the good thing was for the, the corner, punt returner the three ball, to come up and catch hard. the ball. But I think, I'm not certain. Yeah, it was just a lack of concentration. And One thing that you don't want to do with the Cottrell Pope. Cottrell Pope was the feed. Lincoln. Is and now the Bill Copeland starting to wide. feel like they have some momentum a now. For the football, and it's coming out of the big, sky. Got to get the hands up. There's a hole in that basket. In the one, three, right one there, zone. you saw the effect. The, the ball hits the turf and bounces towards the Hampton Pirates uh, punt coverage team. And right now, they've got a short field to work with. They got a call on as they will look ball, for a player. successful run to it's get them started. They go to Yaki Johnson, be Howard, retaining possession senior in his second the and final year with Hampton. Fourth fumble of the game for South Carolina State. The second one recovered by the Pirates. And this may cost them because, as you mentioned, Johnson wearing number two today has uh, 12 or 14 yards on his first uh, carry. Kevin out of Nickelberry the backfield. calling out the plays. Williams keeps it. A good read. Put C.J. Williams way in the far corner. The 30. He comes in and to a great decision by the quarterback to R.J. Cole. The ball, fake bounce pass the, uh, to pull up jumper down read. the lane and in and out for Zion first Cousins. Down, close to it, uh, eight shifty yards picked up. And a foul is going to be whistled against R.J. Cole, which will send Houston line. Smith. The junior out of Columbus, Ohio, after Centric High, to the free throw line. No, actually, he's getting Pressure, it out of bounds. it out into the end oh, zone. Was not the oh, they they called to it do out that of because there was a lot of pressure. Breakdown in the backfield there uh, by the Hampton Pirates. Just uh, inbound. The Bulldogs were on their way looking for Sean a sack Trez possibility. Davis comes and right in to there, poke. just throw the ball away Defensive because player of the year. six feet. High to move pass the across we'll the lane. Ronald Bell was the intended receiver for that one. There's well, it doesn't Pope matter. Inside. You can find Off anybody in the first or second row. That That's like okay, that but you don't want to see go backwards right. because, as you it mentioned, like uh, may have these pirates been are on the 20, of that. knocking on the door of the red zone. That's a good one, and Adam Pope Brown, comes down with the ball. Kicker, 49 yard long make this year. Johnson running the wrong direction. Knocked what away. was at one point and second and two of is now about to be fourth and of seven Zion or eight. Cousins. Yes, Bethune will maintain possession. The line for the Hampton Pirates and right there the Bulldogs just running free. And, uh, Again, Chantres Davis to inbound the ball. Coach Ryan Ritter. That's a sizable mismatch when Torrey you talk the about lineup, along 160 pounds versus Cole. about 285. And right there, and uh, Zion good Cousins, quickness we got a turnover on a travel. And a loss of five. 
This will be a 42-yard field goal. Again, it's the second time we're seeing Adam one, Brown, one. the graduate student. Zip who was also the punter who had to step on that back in line. Long before got, 49 this year, you're this trailing, is 42. You've got to take play. advantage of turnovers and missed and shots. And the Pirates still not the on the board. Two fumble recoveries for Hampton and no points to show for it. Yes, and uh, credit to the uh, Bulldog defense and bending and not breaking RJ, because started uh, out the guys fire. that are... Possessing the ball Here's for CJ. South Carolina State today are making it very challenging, at least in this first quarter, Lincoln, and putting uh, the defense in precarious and positions. A nice short move field, by Chantrez and, uh, Davis. You just don't want to take the opportunities nice ball away from your to be six, nine. in scoring. I thought and CJ right was going to try to take uh, a charge that time. The Bulldogs have inverted a lot of danger. They lead nine. It was zero, 11 points. It feels like the Pirates from Hampton with could the lead. have at least two Torrey points. runs more. down the loose South ball Carolina in the State. corner. Baseline Back jumper is good. Junior for C.J. Williams. Over he really feels comfortable along that baseline. Running back as well. Either side does C.J. Williams. And a quarterback who can that run nice and throw, but has really throat. matured with his progressions early in his career. Long jump for the three ball balls for Houston Smith. Balls, take care of the, the rest. 50, of the 40. Uh, uh, Still fighting for yardage three point and the Pirates to the 41. Hey, that was a great effort by DeBose. In the two and games also, that these two teams uh, played, recognizing Houston Smith had a total the of three points. Both arms. Well, said, Even though he does that, he still yes, he did. has a wiry wide he receiver. He points in this game. Inside and Here comes gets Maitland about seven more court. yards Maitland. because of the length of the body and the churning of the legs. And a Battle great the play floor. with a pitch and catch by the Bulldogs. Now there's no Shadewald had some nice blocking. Technical foul they just called. And again, a flag will fly in. Near the end of the play. And that's interesting because who did he the call the technical foul? Well, I don't know. Was the ball carrier, I'm not sure who the technical was on. a hole uh, coming in from the side uh, there. And, well, first of all, no. might have been on the bench. I wanted to go with that sure. first weekend because there were no other red jerseys. Oh, your natural play as a former like, oh, But then I thought play. I was going to be biased. But uh, the bias is good, and I, we see it here. Uh, looks like number 90 uh, from the Pirates picks up that personal foul and it moves the ball all the way down to the Pirates 41 yard line and I tell you what the Bulldogs here on senior uh, day are getting and receiving a lot of complimentaries here in this first quarter as now they are on the Pirates 41 yard line. Etron James was the ball carrier whose face mask was really tugged. What happened that time. Go back he to scored. Wide for came out in the in Hampton well, territory. They, Great protection. Hits his open receiver this, and able to get to about the 42 35 yard line. Score. Josh Williams, the, again, already a uh, college degree under his and belt. It's going to be Bethune Cookman maintaining possession. This is a seven point game. We're still not sure what happened that time. To lean forward down there. And get a couple extra yards. Now there's a timeout on the floor. On first down and that's a With win 15 for South 14 State. to go. They scored a touchdown you know, on the last drive, taking the ball from almost Bethune. exclusively on the turf. Speaking of ball on the turf, it was a, but they couldn't have been. They got a seven point came out there seven point the game. But then they back. scored. He said no, sure and he, he recovers it. He does. He'll be back. He's we'll figure it out. Down. Not, looks like it's going to be third and short. And we can, uh, a lot Here, of options, we educate uh, tomorrow's leaders today. Uh, two backs now, one the to the left, one to the right. Allows the students to engage in self-exploration through sports, music. They think they had him offside, so they had the early snap. Again, quarterback Ford is on it. Ball back to the 47-yard line. Interestingly enough, I saw one of the officials put two fingers up so it looked like second down. Maybe it is first down. Uh, looked like a neutral zone infraction by the defense. Ball was poorly snapped. It was actually rolled back. And uh, I'm not sure what's going 15, on here. 15, 14 to go. We got an explanation. Got in time. There was it no looked like the center foul. likely was snapped it prematurely, hoping to catch him offside. To make sure what happened was the ball was on the floor. It's going to be and coach second called the timeout. That's exactly second down. So, so it is a seven-point uh, ball a game, but Bill Cookman still in there. there. Uh, two plays ago, Lincoln. Down the lane. And now, uh, off the glass. The but two now, is Houston uh, Smith. Houston Smith is coming alive. The original line of now Wildcats. it's a first down for a point game. The Bulldogs has able to find Demontres Burroughs, the sophomore. Yeah, but at the other end, C.J. Smith, or will C.J. Williams correct it? Burries the three. Uh, slant, but there's two hankies, yellow hankies down 
uh, on the turn. Florida basket. I would think this would vote now. Here I'm stepping out for the Bulldogs. And this is uh, Wally even Parks off the bench. Picked up the nice first down by Parks. With the pitch and catch. They had we'll let them straighten poor out communication on the defensive end. Pulled on that last, touchdown yeah, on yes. their last drive and, and on the Leaving the Charles Williams open like that. Nobody drive. picked him up. He got a nice little mid-range jump shot. Action today here on the football field between South Carolina State, your home university, and unsportsmanlike conduct against the Pirates will help the Bulldogs cause. Make that cannot this another free throw we're talking about the a, a five-point game once yes, again. Somehow, it was an 11 way, point lead for Carolina Howard Bulldogs. at halftime, 36 uh, 25. They led by as many as 13 here the ball in the second half. Methodically down the field. But have been outscored in the second Hampton half. Pirates team that really has had a lot of opportunities to stay in this game, but right now it's all South Carolina State. Temperatures in the 50s, low 50s. 45 40. At least the sun is out. And some optimism. 15 to 9 the run for inside the 10 from the 8 yard the line. This Cookman team. They're right and back in it. Running straight ahead. With five by minutes to go. James. Anybody's Tom ball James. game. Howard at one point in time missing the first half. Looked like pads. they were going to run away with it. Almost a turnover. Right it is a he turnover. And Bethune coming back with it. They're playing some good defense. And Dakini in the lineup playing with four personal fouls. That one's blocked inside by Savior. Williams, he couldn't. Second he couldn't down, get it. They were trying a little here for the alley -oop and, to him. Uh, a lot of opportunity down to the, the lane. Again. Pull it off the glass for two, and, and that's Daikini with four fouls. And now to get back in the he's on the second time this year. Reaches for the, the goal game. line. Yeah. Yeah. With be four just fouls. short as his knee comes down. Nickelberry calls a timeout. His team. The football as well. Nice little cutback move to the left. Seeing that big lead of 13. Dwindles all the way down to three right now. 45-42. A touchdown again. But right now, third That's coming with short. 13-51 to go. Well, no. I'm not understanding here because we're moving the ball back to the That last defensive sequence. The Wildcats actually had switched to a box and one. Putting Parks on... R.J. Cole is trying to completely take him away the and make the other four guys here. win the ball game. Another look. Uh, yeah, right guard getting a chunk of face mask. I don't even, you know, those backside blocks and those backside penalties really are necessary. It makes it difficult. Quarterback still has it. And he'll be slung down to the turf by Stephen Smith. This looks like it may bring up field goal opportunity. It's going to be third and goal. Penalty moving the ball back 10 yards. Right, third and goal from about now the 14. Oh, no. 13.51 to go. Charlie Neal along with Sy Alexander here stripes the at the scope in Norfolk, Virginia for the MEAC basketball the tournament. The 20. It is We're all the 20, pro sports. So Glad you could join us for this and, uh, one. Right now, but it's been a pretty good down. game. Off the glass, no good. Pressure coming. Too hard. And it's the Zion Pirates Cousins, defense coming through here as go. of late. The big quarterback sack. Remember, Dick Kitty, he's, he's back in the lineup, but he's proven his worth since coming back in, oh, even though he's playing with four <laughs> personal fouls. <laughs> Gotta be careful. Conduct. Maitland, Automatic three, first no down. good. Was an and goal Boards cleared by C.J. Williams. First quarter for C.J. in the front court. C.J. a little sure shake and bake right what now. What happened to bring on uh, One the of the things we've noticed is... Like, I guess it was something that was done by the actual RJ Cole has been kind of quiet uh, here in the second there, half. But he's wide open down the everybody. lane. They so opened the floodgates for him that time, didn't uh, they? Uh, and he took CJ advantage of it. Uh, yeah. CJ Williams. The referee to throw, Exploded uh, the to the rim. There must have been something said. RJ oh, Cole with 17 for his points. 11th tackle for loss on he the year. He's not here in the second half. Backfield. That's going to be your he final play of the, in the first half. quarter. Has not scored South in the second Carolina half. South Carolina State so on what, what, what was the Saturday with a nine-point lead. Box and one. They oh, told, totally denied him. Still the Bulldogs still threatening. That's his job, right? He has one home. job and one job. Watching Don't let R.J. Cole touch the basketball. Three seconds. Right. 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 It's 12 to right. three. South Carolina State <laughs> University. Are you next? And he hits it's also high school band day. And it's a 49-42 lead by 
Howard Final University. Seven so point advantage. Players, a lot of great extracurricular so support after from the student body. Bethune pulled it within three. Uh, He's got a four to nothing run for the second quarter. Right. For the Bison. Get it back up to seven. Here on Flow Football. And it's a Bulldogs special Couple teams in offense that have turned the ball over four, or Malik the ball four times, twice recovered Maitland by Hampton today, off. but it's led to no Collins. points. Instead, here's the Short. Bulldogs back on offense. And that's going to be a foul. That may be five for Don Kitty. Been extended by he went over the back that time it. of R.J. Cole. The defense. That's it. That's a, that's a, again, that's five and a Every so coach has his own philosophy, but back to Daytron this James. is a lot different from mine. Well, maybe they saw one of the keys to the game. I think that one, he shouldn't have been out there after he had because I'm three sure South in the Carolina first half and definitely shouldn't have come back this early in the second half. It took a big gamble. Your tablet, smartphone, Roku, or Apple TV. Pay off for Coach On the Riddle. 10, nice cut, but again, you see protecting the football going down inside the five. So he finishes with just five closer points and, closer. and three rebounds. Well, the protection of the football is something that uh, is, I'm sure, to the delight of the South Carolina State offensive uh, nice. coaches. And also, steal and move by uh, Wally Park. He playing, must be a uh, pretty good pretty defensive well player because they put him on all the coaches. And another turnover for Howard University. Again, the Bulldogs. And now are inside the 10. There's a time right on the floor. 11.59. That's the time remaining. Howard University with the five point advantage. But this Bethune Cookman squad, they're not going away. Right, they're not. They're too athletic. First and goal. Every now that answers a nation's call. Battles run. Push, push is no longer a concern. Oh, snap. Fortunate Hunt on the inside of the Just like they drew it up. The winner of this contest goes on to play. Charm Local State tomorrow right here at the in Norfolk, Virginia at 6 p.m. When these two teams or either one of these teams met Norfolk during the regular season, Bethune split with them, winning on the road. 75-68, losing it. But losing on the road, I should say, running it home. 84 76. Howard right. also split and, uh, with Norfolk uh, great State Johnny during the regular there, season. So, uh, for the Bulldogs, as Norfolk they State get into has the history with both of these squads this year. Right. 11 35 remaining. From Scandrick. In a six point oh, ball. Oh, it's just game. your typical 16 0 score here Shot in Orange County. Shot clock right now. South Carolina State stretches its CJ lead again. Still just a two short. possession ball game. R.J. Cole uh, with the loose ball rebound. Pitching a shutout early on. LeBron Morris. Got to get loose balls when you're trying to come back. Into the end zone. Got to have all out effort. And again, this is the every young man who only had 12 possession. carries all year. Now has his first two touchdowns on the so season. Right. Goes inside. Has it taken away by Maitland. Opportunity. Maitland in the front court. Rusher. All the way. Uh, puts it up. He's fine. Right He'll go to the line at one. Certainly doing what he needs to do to keep senior day uh, going well and strong for the Again, South the athleticism that the Wildcats are showing, it's second to none as far as the Middies and Athletic Conference is concerned. They have athletes in every position. Again, they just play a little more discipline. Like that last time, they tried to throw a backside lob. If Sanchez to trail Pope goes up with two hands, maybe he catches it, only went up with one hand. you got to be disciplined in everything that you do. So Maitland with seven points. Perfect at the free throw line tonight. An 86% free throw shooter. Ranked third in the conference in that department. And an attempt to make this a two-point ball game. 49-46. Be a short kick, and he does. And it will take a hop out of bounds and another break. 49 47. Another break. There have been breaks for the Pirates, game. they just have not been able to capitalize them on the CJ Williams on. under 11 it's, minutes it's to go. Surprising because puts it on the floor, puts it up. No good, and a Toure with the tap in. Short field. A little help from the Bethune Cookman. It did. Like backbreakers uh, to 
break this game wide open for the Hampton Pirates. So, Look in. That, well, they've got the better record. You don't record. need that. I can tell you all that. these things that would make sense. The thing about Let me get my ball, that was Wally <laughs> Parks with that Aaron shot. The shape of the football is different. Make that outcome. R.J. Cole exactly looking for because it's such a great buddy cousins. To play. Reverse Hill layup Illinois doesn't again, fall that time. Yards Not a this good year, 12 shot by Chad Lowe. Right, yet right. to lead the Pirates today to a score. They had a missed field goal on their last drive of the first quarter. And this defense is going to get tougher and tougher Maitland. to move against, especially with big bodies like Over to Davis. Goodwin, Davis. Chantrez Davis can't get it to go. 285-pound sophomore from Columbia, South Carolina. Two bad shots, Carolina in my opinion, by the Wildcats. R.J. Cole pulls up. It's good. good. And see so you're down two. Now you're down really put six. A lot six. Of pressure in the backfield and on uh, these ball carriers so far in the first half. Yes, that quick. Hampton, because of much five shots ability. on Johnson's the offensive end. Yeah. A couple of good games. But besides 53, that, 47. Uh, Maitland again. Throws it way up there. The tip in. You see, that's what Underneath. they need to be doing. Taking the ball to the it's rack. The using the hands to the system. To it, but tad too Collins. long. And guess who? Darius and Leonard. Slam the the other time, end. let his teammates shine early Locked. on, but he Collins comes through with a big slap in the back. He field. was the one to put he that does. tip in, and like they gave him that uh, last basket and down the other interestingly end. Interestingly enough, I guess if you're a former quarterback and you become a linebacker, you don't want any other quarterback to do better than you because you're not playing the so position. So they're going to attend so to him. Right Nine twenty-six to go. Tim gets in the backfield and, and uh, a six-point ball game, fifty-five forty-nine. Defensive player of the year. That's Armani Collins. He's out of San Francisco. Grad student, six foot six. And things just falling apart will throw it out of bounds. Was outside He's going to go tackles. over to the sideline and try to. And it will be time to punt this ball away. The Bulldogs defense. Let me know if you've heard some this of that. Before. Don't hurt no more. Right. Right. Yeah, and, you know, again, you wouldn't think that uh, with It'd all be of the reporting we've done about possessions and turnovers and things of that nature but the consistent On thing defense. for the Bulldogs so far in this first half has been the defense. they scored the, the last time down well they have forced punts they have uh, kept this high power pirate offense off the board not out of the end zone off the board no, Bethune, and, uh, right the now, ball, 926 well is the Carolina time State. and it's not fielding it on the hop able to field it this time off the 10. Still speed some around the corner, moisture on the floor. The back. He's out just of bounds, to protect the way, players. <laughs> three yards <laughs> on the far sideline. Right. No Why doubt. Not? No doubt. Too important. You know, but if they don't blow the whistle, you know, because one thing that people may not recognize is here in the MIAC, there is no replay. So if an official misses it, you know, we talked about some of the famous players uh, that played uh, or former stars crazy, that played it, but you may not see it, but Remember right there, like Adrian a great Coleman. block. 2012 uh, CJ Reed, who was the right son of the Cliff Reed, was the exactly. head coach uh, the over at hey, the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, played for his dad uh, at the field. Had some guys great to go there. there. And I mentioned yeah, they Antonio Wagg, Richard Tucson, Freddie no Cole, matter, no matter what, this Freddie was coming Cole, back. Reggie Cunningham, but, uh, and some great names over the past. The dimensions of the football field here, just like any other. Once you're out there on that far side, especially on the opposing sideline, they're going to point out. are concerned. Nine you have to go, to go north of the border Nine to get seconds a bigger on the side clock. Maitland. Field. And uh, we are not Maitland in any driving of the provinces. Inside. Puts it up. So Blah. right there, as you mentioned. Oh, but recovered. Two, three. Back uh, of the iron. Strides New out shot of bounds. clock for the Wildcats. Two Wild flags. Cats. Three flags. <laughs> Wally Park <laughs> ran it down inside. Harvest. Here's the thing, Lincoln. Even though the back ball is all the way back to the 12-yard line for the South Carolina State Bulldogs, he gets the they're still in the top of the line. These foul. guys can yes. throw a 50-yard pass nice on defense this that upcoming time. first down play. And all is forgotten. By Zion Cousins took the charge. Has four right receivers. place, right time. Morris, the tailback. And they go to Morris. They ran well. Although this time, the defense of the Pirates ready. Eight and Moore teams to go. up with Darius Still a six-point lead two for tackles Howard up University. They led right by 11 at halftime, as many as 13 the in the second half. But Coach South Ritter has his team playing a whole lot better here in the second half than they were in the first. Let's tell you what. Let's see who can be the most disciplined and exactly down the stretch. That's who's going to win this ball game. But though Cookman has the athletic 
ability to do it. I'm just not sure they have enough discipline. I've been saying it, beating the dead horse into the ground, but I mean, this is what I kind of I just have to call what I see. I love that sideline express because they get some high major athletes. High block. They can play. He's no slouch. Junior point guard. Houston Smith started 20. Six games for Coach Rivers this year. Especially when you're trying to pick up a first down. Daly Jones is in the lineup the, right now uh, for Bulldogs. Howard University. C.J. Cole to move the ball. trying to get the ball in his hands. Morris colluding tackles. He's been defended pretty well by right. Pope right now. Four, maybe five they, put a, they put some height on Pope. Oh, Cole. Pope comes in at 6'9". R.J. is at 6'1". Right. And he was guarding him out high. And, uh, cuts up field squares his shoulders. That says a lot about and, uh, his ability sure to move his feet. But actually, they give him six. So, Remember, uh, when we talked about the fact that, there, but that was all Pope was guarding him, he was the defensive player of the year. He just took that ball, and somebody took it away from him. And a quick toss out to the flat. Taken away by Chad and Lott. Out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. Jermaine Baxley with his first snap. Good screen by Cousins. Cousins. And there, uh, the defensive he's player he's ran into the screen. And created the contact. Four team fouls against Bethune Cookman, five against Howard. First down and 7.56 is the time remaining here. From our nightcap all the from, from that Norfolk, Virginia. Back with more in a moment. The MIAC, educating student athletes for the game of life. Catch is made and another first down back into pirate territory. Just under eight minutes to go here at the scope in Norfolk. Able to haul it in. Cordell Johnson, the sophomore. Quarter final action between Howard University and Bethune Cookman. University, the winner plays Norfolk State tomorrow. Right here at 6 p.m. So not a lot of recovery time. You get home back to your hotel. 11, 11, 30. Pressure, and there's that mobility. Time to tuck it down. Nightcap tomorrow. Inside the 40 out of bounds at the 36 yard line for four. Should be a bond break. And state rivals. Feel for the pressure coming from the right side there. It was like the game between Bethune, the correction book between Morgan and Cockett State the other night. Just get to the sidelines. Wide open, the jumper is good. That's a two pointer for Chad Lott. Nice ball reversal. Good shot preparation. Nice follow through. For the Bulldogs. By lot. The third team all conference selection. Eight point ball game. Off. Stable of running backs for the Bulldogs. Houston and Smith. All Seems like they're trying to set up things more, a little more than they're, they're running good. Right. Right. They were running early. Here's Maitland. Down the lane. Pull uh, back to the right side. No good. And, uh, as you mentioned, Rebound Chad Lott. Who just scored the last time down. Football. And Hampton trying to. Jalen Jones with John the ball, the ball in his hand. Right there, the freshman uh, gets great yards. Almost there a steal that his time. First carry. And now Back the ball outside. inside the red zone again at about the 14. Bulldogs two for two in the red zone each time. A touchdown to show for it. Howard playing dangerous. The Pirates defense. Uh, ball with the is pass. loose. Ford is From the back corner. on it. Three ball. Ball is second down. The Raymond Raymond the main junior. Pirates the defense freshman. had allowed. Three nice scores from their opponents ball movement that time by the right bison. zone. Just about half of them for touchdowns. Now that lead is back up to shot 11. But now it's down to eight with that jumper by Clitrell Pope. South Carolina State Bulldogs. And, you know, that may Not also only can he play defense, play some offense too, can he? Uh, by less than a touchdown. Naheem Husky for the Pirates. Trying to direct his teammates right to put him in the right positions defensively. Yes, and the freshman uh, making the adjustments 60 to 52. The turnaround uh, in and out. Of tackling style in high Put school. Lot. It's college. Good, good friend. Maitland. Right now, uh, South Carolina down back low. Bose has the catch. Foul. Still on his feet. Fighting for the first down. <laughs> uh, pardon me. Fighting to get past the line of scrimmage. And a I late flag flies in. By the way, Morris, the running back, Sean had a Fresh block Davis. that made it all happen. It? Let's see that? which way this goes. Yeah, I think it was a, uh, it was a charge. It, 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 my point is, down, you just turn and you overemphasize that the referee got to call it. The defender just got cleaned up in the melee uh, towards the sideline. Be a little a more poised with a little run more discipline for throwing, and you could Tusky walk away with the Middies and Athletic Conference Tournament Championship. Because you definitely got the players. You see again, they'll be second down again. South Carolina State down low. 
No stranger today to and it's turnovers stay and some penalties. Howard Ball under their own basket, but only 10 seconds You'll remaining on the shot clock. Block here from Morris to help set up. Big defensive. What was going to be a ten seconds. Bethune, can you play defense? Howard, can you be poised oh, to get a good shot? The, uh, Try to run or, or the hard they call off some baseline screens. Uh, the Pirates uh, incurred uh, an opportunity to have to come off the field. 533 <laughs> remaining in the contest. The Thune down by eight. On the 28, Ford steps the three ball the is good again. The again. Has the From ball, Raymond has the legs, and gets inside the 10. Well, interestingly, enough, 63 he went down 52. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if there's another the lead flag is back to 11. Something because I see the uh, officials uh, waving their arms, but I don't know. No, I'm, I'm hoping there's no flag here because this is John a great Davis by across the Maitland. To Maitland spinning. No one nice open. dish off. And, uh, and Polk finishes. Back there, giving him nice lead block. Good penetration and that time that by Maitland. Before, Ford, allow Polk to finish at the rim. Don't want to take any unnecessary punishment, even though there are two Nine point calls. game. We have a timeout taken as South Carolina State off the back of the iron, just a little bit too take hard for a lot. Three score lead. Maitland all the way puts it up as and it's foul. Player down. He's going to the line timeout. for two. And so far we'll tonight, he's been for the last three seconds times. in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Three three. You're watching the MEAC here on Flow Football. He has eight points. Right. But the 86% free throw shooter who's ranked third in the conference in that department. Last chance to get a nice Dawson Stadium meal he has in four here on the 2017 regular season. To his credit, he's averaging 4.4 per contest. He makes the second. All the festivities. Taking all the sights, sounds, smells, and consumables. Eight point ball game, 63-55. And uh, no matter if you're in the press box or in the stands, he said three threes in a row for Raymond Buffet Jr. Looking for the end zone in the back. And the lead is 11 once again. Burles just could not for make the one arm grab. And he comes in into the ball from game. Bruce Perry. Good coverage. It was a good attempt, as you mentioned. To 25 percent because. It from the three-point like, line, and he's three for three some, tonight. A space was created to get that right. Twenty-six of seventy-nine corner. coming in. In fact, did not play the first catch. time these two teams uh, met. The ball was placed at thirteen uh, points down in Daytona Beach when Howard traveled really, south. Uh, His season high is fourteen, uh, 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 an and that was against right now, two squads throughout the season. He's getting Anger, it done tonight off the bench. He certainly the Bulldogs, is. Scandrick. He can make this a 19-point lead. He has 11 points. That kick is through. Just three away from his season high. I'll say a 26-yard field He's goal for Scandrick. He's been the catalyst in the second half. As really the making Bulldogs three stretch their threes. lead. A three-possession advantage today on to Senior back. Day. Final home catch. game of the year for South Carolina State. And that's a mark of a good team when you... Ball taken away. State Almost University. a travel. Post goes it, takes it into the corner, back out to Maitland. Maitland down the lane, Steve puts it up. You. Dawson Stadium, Won't North fall. South Carolina, the Stone site away today by for this RJ Cole, right out of the hands of Post between the Bulldogs and the Pirates. RJ, left-handed, good. Wouldn't know by looking big at them. Big time play that time score by the MEAC yeah, player of the year. Just put two victories together this year. 13 point There's advantage for the Pirates. play, but equally their biggest lead of the night with three. Twenty to go this year. And it's just a matter of looking game by Inside. game. His poke leg gets the feed. Today, a few things have gone their way. The and puts it in defense, for two. Picking them up after some turnovers. Absolutely correct. And uh, defense cures a lot of ills. And so does uh, touchdowns in the red zone. And right now, as you mentioned, two already for the Bulldogs. Time out. Bethune Cookman. Inside the final seven minutes of the opening half. Time out on the floor. Pirates looking for some Three sort of seven to go. something positive to build on. For going into the locker room. Ball will pop out. And still on his feet. They're going to blow it dead. Now the Three question is whether or not the runner was already That's down the time before the ball came this loose. There is no replay. Nightcap here. So we will go with the official ruling on the field. 
winner he advances to tomorrow's football. semifinals right there. to take on the, the oh, yeah. Spartans of Norfolk Rip State, the number one seed coming the, in. Uh, return man is down, and I'm not sure why the ball uh, or the play wasn't allowed to continue. Boone came into today's game, and like the tournament is the number play, five seed. Howard, actually give the, the number four seed. The Pirates, Should Howard be able to hold on, them the top four to seeds will be playing right. in the semifinals. When it looked like clear that the ball was, uh, and they don't have replay. It and appeared it was a fumble on the pass from the Pirates is Charles. C.J. Williams, and it's a 13-point lead once again. Well executed. Pope holding it high, looking for some help. Here's Maitland. Maitland will drive. This is it all. Pope short. And the rebound pulled down by Howard University, and it's C.J. Williams with that rebound. Good for Hampton, and right now, I have to get the... Pope comes out. And, uh, third down and ten. The offensive and defensive player of the year the going flag. against each other. And Johnson, you talk about when you fall behind by 19, you're not going to be able to show off your running game. Very it's kind often. of interesting. They're right. looking at each right. other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're finding ways. Passing game, essentially serving the as game the running within game. The game. When you get the ball Finding out, out there the edge too. Uh, the guys that run between the tackles. He's talking uh, to the coach. Tackle as well. See, you can why still you got the guy guard, yeah, guard, guard, guard me? Why, why again, do you have him guarding me? He took the red or connect. They got a laugh over there. Knight, got to him in a hurry. <laughs> kind of interesting. As we talked about the right fact there. that. Uh, Pope is was six up. foot nine. No interference penalty. R.J. Uh, Cole no six foot penalty. one. And right now, I have fourth and short on their own forty-one. The Pirates uh, elect to and Howard will inbound the ball here and not go for it. because again, it's the first half, and uh, if you do give. Uh, 220 to go. As we mentioned, lived a charm. The layup, no good, uh, and a foul will they send they least, Howard uh, to the free throw line. It is a fake, and, and the ball is back over to Sean the Bulldogs. Davis. Well, Lincoln, um, <laughs> if you're going to do... Uh, and now a little skirmish, they need to be smart Jones about this. Possession has University. already turned back over to South Carolina State. Correct. Correct. This penalty will not affect possession. First free throw that is, again, your today. punter who's had a rough go at it today in some tough situations. He's doing pretty good. As they decided they were going to have... Anthony Prevost won. Actually, I'm sorry. I said first. Well, that was he didn't his... want to do that. I think you had been better four, off four right. to pick up on He's actually down. shooting pretty well. Because nobody he is. fooled by Short on that, uh, one. that fake uh, And Hampton. Hope with the rebound. But the lead ready. is 14, 71 57. Be on South Carolina State, but after the change in possession, it is Bulldogs football. Remember the ball and. and was, was stopped Long there. range three is Between good for Houston Smith. So even 15 yards is going to put the ball almost at midfield, even with the penalty against South Carolina State. So this was even away from the play. You but know, I mentioned the other end, the little alley a couple of positions, and the crowd including pleaser, the kickoff lock. man, but it was not the punter on that play. It was as usual, Adam Brown. They on had the lob. Of football, but this is back to the Bulldogs. It'll be your standard first and ten, but Travel. from their half of the field, with still plenty of time to go in the opening half. Well, and again, it, if this would have been a normal punt play, the ball probably at best so would have been over. brought back between the 45 and so the midfield. Uh, all intents and purposes, so it, it appears that we're going to have the top four seeds in, in the semifinals. Still, should make for two great games tomorrow. Field. North State looking for a career day versus here. Howard coming off a loss Already two touchdowns by three today. points. Shout out to Buzzer by R.J. Cole. And, I'm not and then sure the rivalry way away between from the ball, A&T but man, and uh, North Carolina Central A&T wrong, having uh, beaten the Eagles pretty handedly in the last game. So it should be a, 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 a great semifinals for the MEAC tournament tomorrow here in Norfolk. Clear the air because I don't so see they're shooting one and one. Uh, CJ Williams Bulldogs charged the timeout here. Those are the side they line right now. He looks so a little bit unhappy about something. To one timeout now with five yeah, green going. in the second quarter. Lincoln, nonetheless, yeah. it, it, it looks like a you don't have a whole lot of recovery time if you're the bison. Uh, the bottles of water, no, you don't. And whatnot, are being administered. The front end of the one and one is missed that time by so 19 nothing Bulldogs with the lead and a chance the threes to add to a three score Maitland advantage. Maitland three is good. Yeah, still still two timeouts remaining for the Bulldogs. The earlier timeout had been for an injury. Steal and a foul. Is going to be whistled by Jalen on with Jalen Jones as quarterback again for 
hands off. They've had Ten six point games. And it's been Still now cross midfield. Within reach. Both teams in Still the one and one. That's a two shot oh, foul, yeah, though, I believe. Right. This yeah. time will be. If, uh, you get four more. Ronnie like Collins. Four Collins. We went out down. about well, six minutes ago with there, cramps. Um, you've done He's well. a 73% uh, free throw slightly, shooter. Uh, less than optimal, but you're at midfield. And again, uh, the now mid this is his first free throw attempt tonight. The Bulldogs has been working well. They've got twins. Two Those to the left, two to the right. And Getting in the single digits. The right side. Morris off to the races. Hurdles a man and down to the 30 yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Bulldogs. Continuing to threaten to score right. once again. Right. Here in the second can foul. Exactly. See, they wish he was back in the ballgame. Top of the formation and then hair free throws made. To the back side of the formation, which becomes a weak side because only one with a receiver. Uh, 11 to, to go side on the right side of the formation a good Comes block in. there you don't the want to foul him which brings a great rushing game uh, near side in the first down Morris again inside the tackle and another great oh, chunk of yardage on first under a minute to go right now right now it's all south carolina state the bulldogs are doing well here on senior day and uh, great blocking and they will send the offensive chad line. scott and, uh, lot rather a great chad lot to the free throw line the 80, the 68 percent from the field the freshman coming back in uh, to the backfield and the rotation of rushers five uh, bevy fouls on the Katie. Davis picks up his fourth on the ground line at the free throw line shy of the 20. He's one of the two back for the line tonight and two of three time today the freshman. Good stop there by Hampton. Uh, however, I believe the Bulldogs knocking on the red zone door again. Lincoln. Those situational made, substitutions. Their offense, what he did, he uh, took right. CJ out uh, on the defensive side of the ball to throw him back in for the offense. Xavier in for defense now. Lead is 10 once again the red zone with 51 seconds to go. Again on the ground. They stick with what got them That's here. off the mark. Back to back carries now from and Jenkins. For the basket. Had carried the load early on. And it looked like it was 32 now. First Probably see they'll come back in and save y'all will come out. Look at that right at the stick at the 18. So it's going to be uh, three minutes, about 15 seconds to go in the second quarter. Lincoln. So following out another opportunity. Savior. For South Carolina State. Apuovo. Morris back into the back. He goes to the sideline. Four wide available with for six four. points. We can obviously, of course, run on his own behalf when needed. They go back to LeBron Morris, and that time will be spun down. He was already down before that ball came loose, but Ian Newton came through the pressure. Also grabbed five Florida. rebounds. Good, uh, recognition of the run there. And, and he fouled out with uh, 43 seconds to go. By the defensive line for the Hampton Pirates. And Meanwhile, Pope no at the free this throw may line. Be the time Four. Now to get that mid-range passing game. But the 15 points a couple of for him tonight. With good size. That was a two-shot foul. Ball. Wasn't it? Florida's been making great decisions. If no one's open downfield, oh. he's rushed he made the, the basket ball to pick up first right? downs and great yardage as well. He's shooting the other way. Yeah. Toward the handoff. He Straight did. ahead, and again, the tackle by Newton that this was time. That the ball exactly. carrier, Trying James to make it a three-point play. We've yes, seen on this alone. And James 75, 67. Like to the Lead is 8. Maybe 10 Free throws yeah. coming uh, Lincoln, from Chad right Lock. All South Third Carolina team all-conference selection. They want to take time off the clock, of course, because you don't want to leave Hampton. A lot of three for four to line to tonight. 11 points to for him. Before half. RJ uh, Cole leading all scorers with 23 points. Mark now lot misses the front end of the one and one. The first down. The Still time. A choices. You can get a first down. The Boone not getting up this here. Maitland close. all the way. Maitland throws it up on his block. We're talking about fourth and inches. Blocked by Lott. And I don't think. I think it's probably a half yard short. It looks like. As the uh, line judge comes in to spot the 33 ball. seconds. Go forward, or are you happy with three points going up on the, the board? The time here? remaining. Uh, Still an eight point ball forward. game. Um, I'm not sure how consistent. And Pope gets uh, it inside and a timeout quickly called by Coach Ritter. Uh, nice. Baseline out of bounds. Set just throw it over State. the top. I think they're going to ask for Let a Pope measurement. Go fact, get it. It's, you did it. It's not the 18. It's now you, you want to talk about who you can foul, but. I Coach Nickelberry has done an excellent job in putting <laughs> well, five gonna be a fairly half yard decent free throw shooters if it's on the, the court. The 18. So it's a six-point ball game. Bulldog some time. Put the chain gang to work. With 31 seconds to go. They've gotten off pretty easy in recent years. The referee will just eyeball it. Uh, but that's a, that's the time where Buddy Pugh needed to know how far do we have to timeouts. go. Timeouts. Possession arrow favors the Bill Cookman. 
I think, I think with one time on off left. Look like they'll go for the Pirates. With what? You don't want to jump off side. And the possession on a arrow snap. favoring. So there's a lot of advantages. You can the possession go arrow favoring uh, Howard. This is where I'd like to see if uh, college yes, teams definitely. can have their quarterback well, come under center and not hard to do tell. it. But that one says it's favoring. It, it is Bethune. Yeah, yeah. It is Bethune. I'm sorry. Yard, which is favoring Bethune. A lot of times, and it looks like Ford may no. I thought he was going to go under so center, but he's not. He's going to take that uh, shotgun snap and Kyle uh, look Foster, to pick up this last yard. Just need the eight-yard line. Virginia. And really they've got it. Is, Bulldogs is will have the first down. Excellent Pirates thought they had shooter. to stop, but doesn't appear to be the case as Deshaun James continued to, continue to lead forward. One. And they may measure From again. From three-point range. But it appears the Bulldogs have it. First and free throw attempt. First and goal coming up from inside the eight-yard line. throughout the season. Shooting better than 75% at the line. I don't right around, right around 77. Uh, argument. Little short. That. Well, it looks like the. And the reason he's getting I a second was, shot that is because he's been seen by the as friendly as perhaps we thought. 28 seconds been. remaining. Shot clock is off. That is, Six still, point that is ball short game. of the eight yard line. It is. Second and, one and is I good. That means. We may see the Pirates celebrating here in the Seven point ball game. On what was fourth and less than a yard. Yeah, I don't think oh, they picked it up. Yes. Bodies flying everywhere. Pirates of hell. Is he okay? Well, I just hope so. The determination is hell, yes, but okay. it looked like the ball carrier right based, on, the, based on the spot of that football. That Again, you need to get up the foul. Just to the eight yard line. Maitland going to the line. You and I have the benefit the of the replay. There was the push. <laughs> and the knee goes down. <laughs> and at that point, the <laughs> waist at is at the eight. And the question is, when that knee went down, <laughs> obviously he wasn't mopping. that far. But uh, he, they spotted that Maitland left side with of the 12 eight. points. So, Pirates with a break to an He's extent. missed one free throw and attempt tonight. And the football Four here. They'll pin back with 93 free seconds throw line. to go. I still don't fault the Bulldogs for going for it there. And he's a pretty good free throw shooter. As I said, he's third he in the conference conventional in that department. 21 yard game. Well, he's only two feet out Trying of bounds. Trying to will his team the play. and keep them alive. Still oh, a lot of, course, of time tongue in cheek as far there, as they're concerned. Uh, it does stop the clock. Seconds, minute and a half. And he will shoot. And second and three. Two free up. throws. They're going to have to get this through the air with some completions. First down. That'll briefly again stop the clock. Nice connection with Alden Knight. Yeah, and a good move to get at least the ball out of uh, the shadows of your own end zone if you're Hampton. And right now they're trying to go up to oh, really? it's, it's the it head. out I over think, the top. I think the wipe up man and almost tired. had his man <laughs> yeah. over the back Should shoulder. Else do this. As looking for Wesley <laughs> but, uh, Wolfolk for the Coach first Ritter, time in his second year, at and that was well played in the secondary by the Bulldogs. Job, because because still uh, the sideline can be his your first friend NBA if you're the defender. Man. If I remember correctly, uh, they went out in the first round last year. The ball carry out of bounds, even if you just need one foot. Uh, it's hard to catch the still. ball when it's uh, three yards out of the field of play. Empty backfield because who are we kidding? You're going to throw the ball with a little over a minute Unusual to go. Unusual miss left. for Maitland. Pressure. Ball tipped Maitland. and almost intercepted as able to break up the potential interception with Four Delvin six Williams. at the line tonight. As Gilchrist well, had it in his hands and the quarterback able to strip conference. it out at the last second. Tough miss. Great miss missed the ball. Effort there, as you mentioned, by Hampton to alleviate an interception. That's going to go South against. Carolina State still with timeouts. Hope. They would have had the ball at the, about the 25 or 20 yard line and another opportunity to score in this first half. <laughs> Manny up and give him the look. <laughs> he hit him in the back <laughs> with the ball. Manny's getting ready to toss him. <laughs> Man, it's a, I'm going to take like these stripes off. Coverage <laughs> with a free safety high. <laughs> I don't even need a whistle. <laughs> right. yeah. And in college, you. remember when you were doing You don't know who I am. <laughs> I don't know if South Carolina may want to use a timeout here. It was funny. The way he looked at him was like Cousins is at the free throw line the with 23 <laughs> seconds to go. Yeah. 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 Apparently, you don't know who I am, young fellow. <laughs> and yard he really line. wasn't trying to throw the ball ahead. He was just throwing it up there. And Manny just happened to be walking in front of him. The final but of course, you don't know. Right. <laughs> right. They are going to get this football back around uh, the midfield. Nine point ball game right now with 20 again, seconds to go. Maitland looking for some help. And I think uh, it was the spin great, down so, low, uh, and it's going to be off the hands of Houston Smith. Uh, and it'll go back to Howard University.
Watson with 15 seconds to go. I think you can call the dogs off now. <laughs> they don't know who you are. It's fourth and 23, so they certainly will. There's not going to be a fake punt here. No? No. Uh, you know, a couple quick passes. Clock stops after a first down in college. Uh, you have one timeout left if you want to try a field goal or at least throw the ball into the end zone after two or three plays. And the foul a foul gets... Uh, and we don't know how, how well this ball can be returned. It doesn't matter uh, that there's offsides by South Carolina. Think about Pope. Yeah. He's a junior. Foster Defensive Donaldson player of the year. He'll be, be no back next fun. year. No, not and at all. he'll get a right chance now, to face I mean, who? R.J. Cole, the right. six. player of the year uh, at the free throw line is C.J. Williams. Uh, up field. 11 seconds to go. C.J. with 16 Four. points. Top One or two at the line Hampton. tonight. And two right or three, 17 points. For the junior from Richmond, Virginia. And... One good block Young man who scored in double figures and, uh, in all but two games for Bulldog Coach Nickelberry and the Bison Don't of Howard University this the, year. Uh, punt return team. They One bring it all. They hit this the Howard punter. Team and make the we will see how this plays selection. out. That'll be an illegal touching on Hampton. But two, two, this is one. likely a first down That'll for the Pirates. Maitland dribbles. It is. Right and it'll move the ball 15 yards. Long uh, shot, seconds no ago. good. You know, I think this is a good attempt. Colts Should down the lane. They let him go. Let him dunk it. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I think the. Yeah, I think and the, that's going to do it. Hold on to it a really good From the scope in Norfolk, Virginia. Way, even the Kevin Nickelberry squad will move on to play yeah, uh, but it tomorrow's semifinal game at 6 p.m. against the number one seed, the Spartans of Norfolk State. Don't get me wrong. It's been a good day for both of the semi-quarterfinal action contest here in the scope in Norfolk, Virginia. Masai Alexander and the rest of us here in Norfolk at the MEAC tournament, Charlie Dale saying so long. Again, the final score, Howard University 80, the Bethel Cookman Wildcats 71. Good night, everyone. A minute to work with, one timeout. Wants it all downfield. Receiver trying to come back, and there's your contact. That's a 15 yard foul, not a spot foul here at the college level. Trace Samuel, the intended receiver. But this ball now is in uh, pirate territory. You get a complimentary, and the clock stops. And it's a first down. A lot of good things happening there. Exactly. And that's what I was saying, that uh, the Bulldogs make it an actual... I said it was Trey Samuel. That's Jermaine Baxley, part of me. But that's what you get. You know, you're back on the Pirates' 32-yard line. So not a lot lost, even though you, you know... So you get rewarded for trying to go for that fourth down there and uh, punch the ball in in the red zone. And now another opportunity to score... Uh, for South Carolina State. Great protection. Ford into space. And it'll be incomplete. Second and 10 coming up. 45 seconds on the clock. A timeout remaining if they need to squeeze in a field goal try late. Well, right there, you had a receiver open. But not enough air under that pass. I think the decision uh, was made well. Well, there was air on the pass. It just, air, it just carried towards the back of the end zone. Uh, the decision was good. Uh, in fact, the pass wasn't that bad. It just had a lot on it uh, towards the back of the end zone there on the post pattern uh, for South Carolina State. They'll continue to air it out. Of course, they had so much success running the football, but in this situation, need bigger chunks of yardage. That time connecting with Austin Ruger, the tight end. They'll be short of a first down, so clock never stops. Well, now it looks like Hampton's going to have to call the timeout because they weren't ready with guys running on and off the field. What a break for South Shift. Carolina State. <laughs> they have been charmed this whole first half, Lincoln Rose. Bulldogs get to keep their lone timeout. Clock was moving on a third and two. They didn't look like the Pirates had the personnel they wanted. And they had to burn a timeout, which stops the clock, which is another gift for the Bulldogs here on Senior Day. And, uh, you know, again, as you mentioned, uh, the ball's on the 29-yard line. They get two yards, and they get a first down, a new set of downs, and they get to maintain one timeout in case they do want to try uh, to stop the clock to bring on their field goal unit. So all is well in Orangeburg, South Carolina, if you're a Bulldog fan. Yeah, Bulldogs, again, that timeout is something they don't want to use except for with time 
evaporating in the final seconds if they have to run on their field goal unit. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, nothing finer than, you know, being four yards away from the red zone, two yards away from a first down with a timeout, and you're the home team. I thought you were going to say South Carolina. <laughs> a ball on the 24-yard line. Out into the flat. Catch is made, and on, again, third down, they'll get it just short of the 20. That should be enough for a first down, though. And they got a holding call against South Carolina State. They'll replay the down. And that's the only thing, the penalties uh, that have really, uh, even this first half out, uh, thank goodness, uh, says the Hampton Pirates players and staff, because right there, uh, more than enough for a first down. And so again, it'll be third down and about 13. Ball back on the 34-yard line. Need the 21 for the first down. Have the first down. Inside the 10, and it'll be first and goal. Clock will temporarily stop after the hookup with Demontres Burroughs. Man, what a great route there. Uh, an inside look for the post and then wisely the ball is spiked so that only a couple of seconds come off the clock Give me second and goal for the 21. Let me ask you as a program and that spike is pretty standard But shouldn't more teams have a play on a situation like that where you just send a couple guys into the end zone about a two or three second play to throw down rather than just concede a valuable down this late I just think that you don't think everybody has their wits in about them. Maybe an offensive lineman's not set, and then if you have a jailbreak. Nine times out of ten, something. that that spiked ball is the norm just yeah. to stop the clock. But now it's second and goal. You're you're not going to likely go for it on fourth because you're thinking about a field goal. So you have two tries here. Correct. Ford may not need two tries, but this one will carry wide. And now here is your one shot, perhaps into the end zone. Well, if South Carolina re recalls, it's making a lot of its money on the inside routes, not towards the sideline. And right there, uh, another flag on the on the play. If it's against uh, South Carolina, it'll move them back again. And they're still in the red zone. That's what's so um, fortuitous. And I mean, they're, they're charmed because uh, they're still playing with house money. Uh, in the red zone, and as you mentioned, Lincoln, still one timeout left in the back pocket uh, <laughs> for Coach <laughs> Betty, uh, Buddy uh, Pugh there, and he's he's got his team up 19 already. Uh, I think he's going to get something out of this. Second and goal. Ford going to get some of that yardage back. Another flag comes in. Ford goes down at the three-yard line. They'll sort out this penalty. They're talking about spiking the football, but that's not going to be the case. Bulldogs are going to be pushed back even farther. This is, you know, unfortunate because right there, I understand one penalty, but look, the quarterback does a great job to get out of jail. Oh, it's maybe a chop block? Well, they just called personal foul. It'll be, a, again, it's still second down, but mind you, you only have nine seconds left. And I don't even know if you have time to throw it down into the end zone or if now you just need to find a sideline pattern and call a time or call a timeout downfield. I just didn't I'm not sure where the where the Did you did you see it there? We'll, we'll get it okay. Uh, set up here now on again it'll be second and goal from the 32 yard line and they're going to kick now. They have a timeout. If you have a bad snap, they can take it. This would be a 49-yard field goal try. And this ball will hit off of the crossbar. Wow. And it was accurate. You know, it would have gone at 48. It would have made it. Pirates rightfully had a man back to return. And those are the final seconds of the first half. So this is a Bulldogs team on senior day that fumbled the ball four times in the first half. And as a result, well, they have a three-score lead here at home. South Carolina State and Hampton have reached halftime. When we come back, we'll have the marching bands here on Flow Football.
and out can the way you lose. Four minutes, four minutes, and the hour.
South Carolina State University. Are you next? A safety, two touchdowns, a pair of extra points, and a field goal added all up in the Bulldogs with a 19-point lead after one half of play despite four fumbles in the first half, Steve Foster. Well, we don't have to worry about that because the scoring is uh, produced in the red zone. Uh, the time of possession is great, and the third down conversions are right where they need to be to be ahead by three scores. Hampton is scheduled to get the football first after winning the toss to front of the second half. Uh, remember, Hampton able to avoid giving up a late score to the Bulldogs in the final moments of the opening half. A long field goal try that hit off of the crossbar after some penalties had backed the Bulldogs up some. So second half about to get underway, a three-score ball game, and it's the Bulldogs looking to hand Hampton just its third loss in conference play. I think if folks who were just following the standings heard 19-0, they would assume it was the Pirates on the road today taking care of business. Ball fielded at the 14. Underway here on Flow Football with the second half. It'll be first and 10 from about the 32-yard line. As as were Delman Williams and the Pirates offense will set up for its first drive coming out of the locker room. 
Well, the offense for the Hampton Pirates has been very limited, uh, regardless of passing or rushing. And that's one of the reasons why you see that goose egg on the uh, scoreboard here in Orangeburg, South Carolina. And then along with that, uh, there's been no tempo. And we're going to have a change of quarterback, by the way, here to start the second half. And Brendan Green, the redshirt freshman out of Columbia, South Carolina. This will be his third game to take a snap. And he will keep it up the middle and he will be swallowed up by the tandem of Tyrell Goodwin and Tiberius Cravens they're a combined well over 500 pounds oh they are and they do a great job in uh, stopping up the B gap to the left side between the left guard and the left tackle and not much running room one maybe two yards gained by the new signal caller doing a 285 pound sophomore Cravens the 235 defensive end senior And again, your quarterback now green downfield and overall nice coverage on the play by Alex Brown. Alex Brown gave an aw shucks at the end of that uh, play. Uh, wasn't sure why he felt so bad. It was good coverage there. And uh, the ball sails over the head of both the defender and the receiver. But that, that ball couldn't have been caught by anyone. As again, the quarterback green was looking for Alden Knight. There's a couple catches here today. Interestingly enough, you see a couple teams uh, don't put the defensive linemen's hands on the ground on third and long, and they just come uh, from various uh, positions on the field, and it works again as the inside-out rush of the defense Lincoln allows no game. The uh, pass is caught by Johnson, but he's going to lose about four yards on the play. It'll be fourth down coming up for the Pirates. Bulldogs defense. Again, has been a constant. And Johnson never got things started, needed the 42 for a first down. The 32 was your original line of scrimmage. Looks like it's moved back to the 28. And the advantage of not uh, the defense uh, believing, not putting their hand down in a three or a two point stance is, or actually a four point stance, I should say, two hands down. And so they have that mobility and they used it well there to corral Johnson. And the punter, Brown. Gets a good one away. In strong. Cross midfield. And the Bulldogs will have it at the 42-yard line. Well, that was great. Again, I love when the punt returners come up and catch the ball. That's their number one and main job. But if you can get some momentum up and bust through the first guy who's trying to tackle you, you can get 15 or 20 more yards and bring the ball backside of midfield stripe. And now uh, the Bulldogs again in pirate territory. So for South Carolina State, of course, your quarterback remains Dewan Ford. They go back to the running game now that, again, the clock is not an issue. You know, their running game has uh, suffered some during the year, but right now uh, they're getting a lot of production out of two and three uh, rushers from the backfield. Ron Morris had two touchdown runs in the first half. Doesn't quite get back to the line of scrimmage here. It'll be second and ten coming up. The other good thing about running the ball, Lincoln, is you uh, maintain a higher time of possession. That was one of the keys to the game for the South Carolina Bulldogs. And also you shorten this game because, again, uh, the Pirates can score. And if you're up three scores and you can punch one more in, uh, advantage Bulldogs. Ford fires a bullet and just cannot be hauled in by Williams. I think that was a good pass, but even better defense there by the Pirates because that ball was on the money, and it was a good route by the receiver, but still uh, better defense. Robert Scott got the hand in there to poke the ball out. Yeah, he did, and that was a good timing. Did not draw a penalty for holding or pass interference in the defensive secondary. And, uh, you know, sometimes good defense beats a good play call in offense. They need about 10 and a half yards here for the first down. Ford. Pressure stays cool, but ultimately off the mark with his throw. The nearest receiver for the Bulldogs that time was Tyler Shadewall. A good defensive stand here by the Hampton Pirates. Now, if you're the Bulldogs, you don't mind taking a whole quarter of just back and forth football and running this clock down, but you do want to maintain at least a two possession game. Right now it's three, but you want to maintain at least a, at a minimum two possessions because the Hampton Pirates, they're going to come out and they're going to give you everything they have in the second half. 
you know what I think the Bulldogs did wrong on that drive. They forgot to fumble it. <laughs> right, huh? Just a ho-hum typical. Oh, and here comes uh, a penalty. A false start on the Bulldogs. And this will back them up five yards. And honestly, that's not the worst at this part of the field. It will buy their punter a little more room to work with. Kind of like, uh, as you mentioned previously, uh, no fumbles. Some people just don't do well without drama. <laughs> and, uh, right there, a ho-hum series for the South Carolina State Bulldogs really didn't result in much. But uh, when you start seeing penalty flags and the ball bouncing around, it seems like they've gotten into the end zone, at least on the scoreboard. Cliff Benjamin's your punter here on fourth and 15. Able to get this one away, a boomer. And it will strike and bounce inside the 10. And for the Pirates, they're pinned for the second time today inside that 10-yard line. Remember the last time, a touchback got the scoring started for the Bulldogs. Exactly. I, say, I keep saying a touchback. So safety. A safety. <laughs> I know I partner knew what you, you meant because uh, you had said that briefly when the safety was uh, committed. And you know what? Uh, again, as long as you change field position, especially when you're up three scores, you can tend to, to joust. And that means, you know, two first downs and a punt, uh, three and out and a punt, move move the ball back and forth. But as long as no one scores, you maintain uh, your lead. Well, they gave the ball to Johnson, and then Johnson is dropped for a loss. They have gone That's back to Delman Williams at quarterback on this drive. With the tackle, yeah, and uh, it's going to be second and long after the loss of yardage there inside the five. Yeah, and, and a good jailbreak uh, defensive uh, play there by the Bulldogs again. And yeah, among those excelling, Deshaun Taylor, the middle linebacker. Got good flow, and it looks like the Pirates on offense a little bit disoriented here in their uh, own shadows of their end zone again. Williams again at quarterback, rolls right, it's going to feel pressure, and just got rid of that ball. Again, it looked like it was a forward pass. They rule it incomplete. Well, if it wasn't, that was six points there because it was a scoop and score and a great defensive play by uh, the Bulldogs. Well, it looked like there may have been a, a blow to the head that ultimately created that mishap. All sorts of things happening there, and when it's all said and done, it's simply going to be third and 14 from the four-yard line. But as you mentioned, when chaos occurs, the Bulldogs seem to be fortuitous, at least on this Saturday. And uh, Lincoln right now, uh, nothing going right. For I think a run is playing it safe. They hand off to McKenzie, and they will lose another couple of yards. Well, you know, as you say, uh, for this Saturday, a touch, another touchback may ensue. <laughs> and, uh, right. You will, usually a punter would like 15 yards to work with. This correct. ball will be snapped from the two. Yeah, and that puts the punter again on the end line, and with a bad snap, uh, there could be the possibility of an it stepping on the end line and possessing the ball, uh, results in a safety. I don't think the Bulldogs are going to apply some pressure here, do you? I think they're coming full board because they've gotten good returns uh, from their punt return team, so why not? Let's go get it again. It's senior day. End back. No safety this time. A low kick, and this is what you can't afford. But ultimately fielding it off the hop at the 35. And up to the 42. If you're the return man, that ball, if you're going to have good field position, can't go over your head. No, you don't want to do that, but a uh, good recovery there. And you still get an opportunity to bring the ball back. And, uh, you know, uh, you're almost at, at midfield. So the Bulldogs will still have the ball at midfield. At the 42-yard line, close to midfield. Yeah, and, and it's it's you know that this possession, and we'll see if your theory holds true, was after a chaotic exchange there for uh, the Hampton Pirates on offense and the uh, South Carolina State Bulldogs on defense. But that that living in that chaos has seemed to produce points at least today for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs again lost half a yard on first down on their last drive so they had to go to the passing game. Let's see if they can get the running game going again. They had so much success in that first half specifically with Robert Morris but we also saw 
Nice running by Daytron James, among others in that backfield. It's Morrison James picked up most of the uh, rushing yards for the Bulldogs in the first half, Lincoln. And, uh, you know, when you're getting that type of production, I think you still need to mix in a little pass just to keep that uh, secondary honest because you don't want them to walk down a strong safety or one of the four cover guys into the box and take away your good running game. Seven is your optimal that you'd like to see uh, when you're running. Six is a treat and five you might as well run all day. First and ten for South Carolina State here on senior day their final home game. And again, it's Morris, and this is a nice gain on first down, getting at least that minimum four yeah. yards that you want to see, Steve Foster. Absolutely, and again, the clock is working in your favor. It doesn't stop. Uh, you have second and manageable. Uh, you're getting towards midfield. If you can pick up the first down uh, just past the 50-yard line, maybe you try to air it out and uh, see if those uh, secondary guys are sleeping. Morris with the cut and not letting him pass. Again, a big body up front. A few of them. Let's see who ultimately will get to him first. As, again, we'll give a lot of the credit to the big body that belongs to Desmond Sturdivant, a defensive lineman. I'll tell you, it looks like also number 26. Uh, walking down into uh, the box to stop the run. That's why you got to keep that secondary honest because they just can't cheat for the run all the time. Third and six and four just wants to get rid of it. His receiver was draped the whole time. Uh, but the Pirates defense appears to have held and will force a punt from the Bulldogs. Exactly. And again, if this quarter goes scoreless, it's a big win for the Bulldogs. And uh, even if they don't get the running game uh, back on task like they did in the first half early here in the third quarter keeping the ball on the Hampton Pirates side of the 50 is still going to help the Bulldog defense and Benjamin your sophomore punter off his left foot oh another great roll for the Bulldogs Looking to salvage it back in the end zone, coming back out, and it'll be first and ten at the five for the Pirates. Far from the worst case scenario, but again, a questionable decision at this point to try to scoop that ball up. If you muff it, you are surrounded by Bulldogs to fall on that ball. The Bulldogs did a great thing. They didn't have to just charge and attack and miss. They just corral the return man. And as you mentioned, almost falls into the end zone, spins back around, and four Bulldogs waiting there. And you just listen. Anywhere inside the 10 for me on a punt is perfect. The five or, or, or less is outstanding. And right now, 95 yards to go for the Pirates uh, to get to pay dirt or probably 70 if you wanted to kick a field goal, Lincoln. So uh, with 940 and some chains to go here in the third quarter, uh, the Bulldogs still on track on senior day. So again, we're back to the starting quarterback, Delman Williams, for a second straight drive. If this is a false start, it'll be half the distance to the goal line marked off on first down. And this just puts more pressure on your offense because uh, we've already seen a safety. Yep. <laughs> and it looks like uh, if the first drive of the game, yeah. the Pirates was a safety. Ah, that's tough. Didn't look like much of a flinch to, to draw that hanky. Had to have been a receiver out wide. A bullet caught and a great play. Not a lot of room to work with, but able to find his sure handed receiver and dial up Ronald Bell. Ronald Bell does uh, a great deal of after uh, the catch there, getting even a couple more yards to get uh, the Pirates out of the shadows of their own end zone. Pressure coming, able to get it off in time. Johnson. Will finally be pushed out at the 22-yard line. Williams did not have a lot of options, but was able to identify his 5'7 teammate in time. Well, and Darius Leonard, uh, we spoke about two of these guys uh, before the game started, and one meets the other. And he says, not on senior day, friend. It was Deshaun Taylor putting the hit on the QB. But Williams and company with a second and seven coming up. They need the 29-yard line. 
on this Saturday afternoon in Orangeburg, South Carolina. It's starting to feel a little bit more like November. Yeah, and the shadows coming out uh, on the field as well, but uh, still all South Carolina State. And that time just hurrying the pass, trying to connect with Bell once again. Bell ran into <laughs> Darius Leonard, and uh, the defensive player of the year in the MEAC said, no, you're not going to catch this. Actually knocks the ball away, pushes the receiver all in one time, and claps to uh, motivate his teammates. So that's, uh, I guess, why you're the captain and also the player of the year. Darius Leonard pops up on your GPS. Choose an alternate route. Exactly. Third and seven for the Pirates. Trying to keep this drive moving. They were as far back as inside their own three-yard line a few plays ago. Looking for their first points on the day. Underneath. And it'll be close, but a little short. And fourth down, and you would imagine time to punt for the Pirates. And uh, no, no way... Again, when I looked for that fake punt, it, it was a it was a good decision, but the route is run behind the stick, the line of the game. So when that happens, if you get tackled immediately, you have no opportunity to even stretch the ball out to try to make it uh, a first down on the catch. I think that reflects, though, how little time Williams has felt like he has had in the pocket. The great pressure from this Bulldogs defense today. Absolutely. And unable to field the snap, and more woes on special teams as Adam Brown falls on it, but it will be Bulldogs football. And I tell you what, uh, a great push off the corner for the Bulldogs, too, because they were on the punter with the bobbled snap. And again, uh, just think if that would have been done in the end zone in the last position, that would have been another safety. But right now, uh, the ball's on the 11-yard line or 9-yard line for the Bulldogs. And just good defense all around. And here's special teams. I think the ball may be placed at the 10, but uh, 9, like I said, uh, Initially, nothing wrong with the snap, just no. took his eyes up downfield. But the Bulldogs were in on the punter quickly, so even if uh, the punter would have recovered to try to punt, once he takes those two steps, he's not the punter, he can be tackled. Jenkins, the running back, and a nice response here on the quick change by the Pirates defense. And among them up front, Miss Young. Well, they're big up front, I mean, and I'm not a big proponent these days of running a lot of a gap, the meaning between the center and the and the guard because there's so uh, many big, built low to the ground players that just are up the middle, just looking to cause chaos. Morris, now your tailback. Ford has it. He keeps it. Obviously, he's mobile. Will take the shot as he falls forward inside the five yard line. Third and goal coming up. For South Carolina State, even a field goal here makes it the traditional 21 points. Three-score lead still for South Carolina State, but they would love to punch it in. Well, I'd give them 22 points, but yes. Yeah, 22, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> the 21, absolutely, they'd have to go for two on one of those attempts. My math today has been a skew. <laughs> well, I tell you what, you've, you've got the right idea, and that is that South Carolina State can go up by three scores. In the end zone, catch is made, and touchdown, Bulldogs, this time through the air. It's Demontrez Burroughs for the second time this year. Well, Burroughs did a great job of uh, using that big body. Uh, he is number one on the field, and uh, he was the guy that also protected from the, uh, the secondary hits of the Hampton Pirates that got on him quickly, but enough. He ran his pattern in the end zone, so when he got tackled immediately, when he come, falls to the turf, he has a touchdown. Uh, on the flip side in the last possession, we saw the Pirates come up short of the line to gain, and that didn't do them any good, and that forced the punt. Extra point try for Scandrit. Nice job by the holder, and they recover. Scandrit three for three today on point afters. Ford did a great job here throwing the ball out wide for his receiver. And uh, with that big body, uh, you get an opportunity to fall forward into the end zone, and that's exactly what happened. Seventh touchdown this year for the improving passing quarterback, Dewan Ford. They knew they always had an athlete, a tough individual, according to, again, his head coach, Buddy Pugh. 
Always been able to run and throw. Working through his progressions that time, knew he had his man in Burroughs. Yeah, and you, you want to mix it up there, and uh, it's great to see another score on the goal line today for the Bulldogs. And it's a South Carolina State this year having to overcome obstacles without one of their best offensive linemen in Stevenson, a young offensive line in general. Secondary had come well on the defensive side, and that was the last piece really they needed to click. You knew what you had returning at linebacker and Mr. Leonard. Right. And so that defense has kept these games close all year long. They have just slipped away by one score and no more than that, with the exception of one loss by two touchdowns this year. Well, South Carolina State today uh, getting the offensive production, in particular three times they've scored in the red zone, and that was my first key to this ball game. And, you know, if you just crunch the numbers, that's what you saw. Fielded at the 11. Into the masses around the 25-yard line. That's where they will set up for their next drive. As for Hampton, the return from Miles Morris. And a flag also. Sure. This may push again the Pirates back even further. With the uh, legal use uh, of hands to the back on the return here. And uh, again, the Bulldogs living a charmed Saturday afternoon on senior day here in Orangeburg, South Carolina, and uh, Coach Buddy Hugh has to say, let's just keep maintaining this momentum, and the momentum that the Bulldogs have uh, found uh, offensively inside the red zone, and the defense has been very good all day. Again, Pirates not favorable field position. A little razzle-dazzle on the reverse. And a run down the far sideline, off to the races, up to midfield. And what a design play there for Ronald Bell. Well, you had to do something if you're the uh, Pirates. You had to shake up uh, the defense because too much penetration was coming from the Bulldogs up front traditionally straight away. So you add the wrinkle of misdirection and you get a speedster uh, with a little flip back towards his own sideline and a big gain for the Pirates. Out to the wing, nowhere to go, just back to the line of scrimmage. That has to be a penalty, no? Oh, uh, well, there's a gift there for the MEAC Defensive Player of the Year as he's playing in his home uh, stadium as Darius Leonard. Right there on the far Hijacks sideline. Johnson in the air, kind of throws him down. Oh, that's, that would clearly be a penalty. Uh, Are you calling it on gravity? Yeah, well, <laughs> gravity yeah, he, reached up and grabbed him then. But he's a uh, strong individual. Again, he was a high school quarterback, among other things. A yes. man among men in high school. Down the middle. And he was open. Again, they were trying to feed Ronald Bell. Ronald Bell was open. It was a nice little quick look in. And uh, the tempo was good as well. But uh, just off the mark, uh, the Pirates now starting to at least try to flex their offensive muscle here uh, at the 49-yard line of the Bulldogs, and it brings up third and seven, Link. Well, the Bulldogs jumped, and that appeared to cause the linemen to move. If that's the case, it's going to be third and a couple. Everybody's pointing fingers right now. It is, in fact, an encroachment. A manageable now third down and two uh, you can have a couple more options than probably what you had at third and seven yeah once they cross that line of scrimmage the lineman on the appropriate side of the line is allowed to react in defense and again on third and two quarterback designed run and it'll be a first down to keep this drive going. The tackle made by Chris Adams looked like he almost had a chance to strip that football out. But nice job with the ball security by Delman Williams, your quarterback. And Williams did a good job with the fake there to Johnson and kept the ball and cut up field. He only needed two yards. He got three. And uh, that's how you move the chains. He may have got a little more than three now that I do, uh, again, my math, Lincoln. Twenty-six nothing Bulldogs. Hampton trying to get on the board. Great protection downfield. Had a man wide open. Just overthrows Powell. 
And I think that's just the internal clock after the defense had been getting quickly to the quarterback in that first half, but he had time. Well, you know, and again, air un under the ball, it just was out in front of the receiver. And that's two times here uh, on this drive that uh, I think receivers that have been open out of their cuts have been missed by the quarterback. Williams will change up the call. In Bulldog territory. And you see, of course, the quarterback on the defensive side and Darius Leonard. They need the 31. An incomplete pass. Third down coming up. Good pressure off the corner. Uh, I think the route was good, but uh, pressure makes the timing bad. And right there. Um, A roughing the passer against South Carolina State. I was going to say, there was a lot of pressure in the backfield, but uh, I think probably one step too many, and then a, a hit. We'll get to see it on the replay. Right up the middle, and they're going to get him for going low. It wasn't maybe intentional, but you do have to protect. This is where he found himself. That's right. Already tangled up with the blocker. First and 10 from the 26. Pirates looking for their first points. And they're going to get closer to advancing that cause. As this time hauling it in is Wesley Wolfuk. Wolfuk does another good job getting into the middle of the defense. Uh, second level there, about 12 yards downfield. And those are such manageable passes uh, to play pitch and catch. And uh, then wraps his whole body around the ball because a bunch of converging uh, red jerseys all over him. Williams looking left the entire way. Had his man, Wolfhook, just short of the first down marker. And cannot haul it in. Well, the problem was uh, the feet got tangled coming out of the break. And when you get flat-footed, it's hard to make any type of uh, athletic move linking back towards the ball. So a flat-footed receiver, all, could, all they could do is just reach out for the ball. <laughs> his arms weren't long enough to haul the pass in because his bottom frame couldn't move. Don't want to be flat-footed coming out of the break. Just off of the fingertips as Williams second and ten now. Play action down the middle. And again, just Within reach, but not hauled in. The target this time was Chase Powell. Chase Powell ran a great route. He was open. Uh, the ball about six inches lower, and that's a touchdown, Lincoln. So uh, these receivers are, are running really good routes. Uh, even the timing of the pass was great. Uh, it's just that it's off the mark. It's too high for that receiver. Now, if that would have been <laughs> the previous receiver, you may have hit him right in stride. Pirates looking to take that goose egg off of the scoreboard here in the third quarter, facing a third and ten. And they would just assume not kick a field goal. Pressure, end zone, and unable to hang on to it would have been a fantastic catch. Chase Powell in the back of the end zone just cannot hang on. And you see he was being pestered by Devondre Powell, the safety. Yeah, and I tell you what. Uh, even though that ball had to get out of the hands quickly, uh, it was almost a pinpoint perfect pass. And that's hard to say. And it's also hard to catch, especially when you have a defender draped all over you and you only have about a half a yard to get your feet in bounds and then worry about coming down with possession of the football. Well, they're not worried about simply putting on points. They're thinking about winning this game, which means looking for a touchdown here. Yeah, and I think this is the right call because you know, Bulldogs will call a timeout. Again, they lead 26 nothing, but with fourth and 10, you can still get a first down without scoring. Bulldogs defense looking to come up with a stop. You're absolutely right. And I want to take a look at getting, you know, bending but not breaking. And we've said that in the first half with this Bulldog defense. Watching MEAC football here on Flow Football. Bulldogs and Pirates. You saw Leonard with the hit on the quarterback and the blanket coverage from Powell. 
beat coverage. And, and, and Lincoln, uh, all day, uh, this South Carolina State defense has really risen to the occasion. Uh, the offense has complemented it well. Three red zone touchdowns uh, on senior day. Uh, they were only at a clip at about 36%. Well, today, they've upped that percentage. And, and I think that's made all the difference in the world. A lot of that is because they can run the football. Yeah, and I'm not sure what happened uh, in previous uh, ball games and contests that they've been in, but had they uh, shown the moxie that they had today in getting into the big letters, <laughs> then I think their uh, season would be a lot different. So again, Williams at quarterback. They can get the first down at about the five. As time in the end zone and wide open. Pirates are on the board for the first time today. Ronald Bell is in the end zone for the seventh time this season. That was a great look off there as the uh, offense set up to have receivers on the left side of the formation uh, be primary. And then you come backside in a great route. Uh, that was a corner post route, and uh, it really fooled the defensive secondary of the Bulldogs. Well, that was the 29th trip into the red zone for the Pirates this year. 17 touchdowns to show for it and a handful of field goals. Extra point is good. The first seven points today in Orangeburg, South Carolina for the visitors. The Hampton Pirates able to connect through the air. They find themselves back within 19 points here on Flow Football with 4.28 to go in the third quarter. In Lincoln Rose, along with Steve Foster, and Steve, of course, fourth-year head coach, Connell Maynard. Mentioned uh, former North Carolina A&T standout back in his playing days. But I think what some people have uh, forgotten over the years, he was Jamie Foxx's body double. He ran all the football plays and plays with the actor Jamie Foxx in the movie Any Given Sunday. I love that movie. Uh, I loved how they slowed down things, and then they uh, had the camera angles right in there in the middle of the field. And You know, Jamie Foxx, uh, uh, we're Texans, so we want to give uh, the Terrell Texans uh, native a shout out but listen we needed coach to do some football things because uh, coach Maynard knew a lot more when it came to uh, actual football play coach Maynard with a long arena football league career as a quarterback in his own right yes before he uh, was coached by Al Pacino in that movie did you see the movie? I did see the movie. You like it? I did. Interesting movie, uh, but it, it depicts some of the things that happen uh, one day from now. Maynard was also a body double in Remember the Titans, if I remember correctly. Getting paid. Way to go, coach. Now right now, just trying to get his Pirates back in. It would involve some s stops on defense, and right there, blowing up the return. And now... Back to our new norm, a loose ball scrum, and this is Bulldogs football. I don't know how <laughs> Bulldogs have been doing it all day, but it looks like the ball keeps getting separated from their return guys and from the receivers and from their rushers, and then somehow, some way, that the ball bounces right back to them. That hit the turf. They have fumbled five times and recovered three of them. I'll tell you, you know, you have the tendency when you're a return guy to want to stop. And I tell you, it goes down to Newton's uh, three laws. And if your body does not stay in motion, uh, then it will get swallowed up. And it sure does. And then the ball also goes to the turf. I think that's the exact way he wrote it. Yep. <laughs> and three wide here. And again, they'll keep it on the ground. Clock is their friend. And Morris diving forward. And again, just wants to protect that football and keep the clock moving. Well, five is not happy because he believes that had he kept his foot in, that he could have been running for a while. But look, right now, it's a stalemate. Seven points scored by both teams, so you uh, still maintain the 19-point uh, lead if you're the Bulldogs. And uh, less than four minutes to go here in the third. A 19-point lead at halftime. Touchdown apiece here in the third. Back to Morris, around the tackle. And a face mask likely to be called here. And, of course, these days there is no five-yard variety. Well, and, you know, I think Hampton thinks that it's against South Carolina State, but I think this is a face mask, Lincoln. Yeah. 
And I know you don't want me to guess. Oh, I think we I think we both saw the face mask. <laughs> yeah. It's a personal foul. Every face mask these days for the past what five six years right. has been a 15 yard penalty. There's no five yard for no. grasping. Grasping. Yeah, that there was. It would have been a grasp back in the day. Because you don't hold on to it, but just so much attention paid towards uh, above the neck, and so player safety in general. Correct. So Dwan Ford again out of the shotgun with a couple of backs Morris behind him and a quick handoff to Morris This is a young man again only had 12 carries this year Well, he's got at least that this game and two touchdowns if I'm not mistaken At the first two scores for the offense today a safety got the Bulldogs on the board and a high snap on a punt Punter fielded it, but when you plant that second foot back all of a sudden it was out of bounds and on the ensuing drive, the Bulldogs were able to put another seven points on. It was 9 nothing before their defense had a chance to protect its first lead. Right now, the offense out there has Ford with three receivers. And right back to the running game. Uh, Pirates have seen this a few times. Yeah, they have. And uh, I know um, Stephen Smith with the stop. You want to advance the ball. But again, the clock is your friend. And if you can play to a stalemate third quarter, Really, again, it becomes a three-score fourth quarter, as you mentioned, Lincoln. And uh, that's not too bad for a South Carolina State uh, team that is playing very good defense. There is Kamisiong helping clean up that play as well. Ford, top pressure coming at him, able to find the receiver to Bose. And they'll say no, incomplete, scooped it off the turf. And the Pirates' defense, after their offense put up points, has held. Yes, they have. And uh, had that ball been uh, just about a foot higher, it could have gone for a first down. But good pressure off the corner with the uh, corner blitz there by the Pirates in the face of Ford. And he had to get rid of the ball probably one timing second earlier than he'd like. Benjamin. Benjamin back to punt. High ball, he'll get lit up, and that should draw flags. Oh, it's not going to draw a flag because here's the thing. When when you have to go off kilter to get the snap, uh, I don't think they're going to give that to you. He becomes a, a regular player. Watch, because he has to go. Well, I, I guess they called those, yeah, those two little steps. Uh, again, that rule is very... Um, deliberate in that now you can argue that that wasn't much of uh, a change in, in running from punting but I believe that's what kept again it's a judgment call I'm not saying it's right but it's a judgment call and then they have that center judge that C he just looked and said hey man you better play on well, so that's a couple times today we've seen some contact on punters and it'll go unpunished and able to hang on to the football there is Williams with a nice chunk of change up to the 35-yard line for the Pirates. Led them on that touchdown drive a moment ago, which was his third touchdown toss on the season. Looks like he picked up maybe five yards on that play and a, a heads-up play uh, to gain something when uh, the coverage was good in the secondary for the Bulldogs. This game has not been kind to either punter. As Johnson, the man we focused on, simply they fell behind too early. Johnson, and they have struggled yeah. to find ways to get him involved. Well, he's done all he's, he can, but uh, he was treated rudely uh, by Darius Leonard on his own sideline. We thought that was going to draw uh, the yellow Third hanky, the Lincoln. The and, you know, being that former rusher of the football, I definitely wanted to see uh, the hanky come out. But I guess on senior day, and you're the defensive player of the conference, uh, you can get away with that. Can't throw a flag every play. We'd have rotator cuff surgery at halftime for all of our officials. Well, it's good it's stop right there. It's at the stick, but uh, Darius Leonard. Leonard thinks they have the stop. They're motioning for the first down to move the sticks. And he's disappointed. He thought the Bulldogs' defense had come through. <laughs> a spirited linebacker and defensive player of the year but it, it was a good stop but I think the forward moment, oh well see here's the thing forward progress yes. before he is twisted backwards they're going to exactly. give him the 40 
But the defense of the Bulldogs playing very well here in the shadows of the 40-yard line, uh, almost by midfield. Williams throws to the side where he had three receivers, and he will connect with Powell. And again, five yards there, first down. Uh, that gives you a lot of run pass options, and both quarterback and receiver on the same page there. In fact, I think it's going to be second and four. So they pick up six on the quick out uh, to this near sideline. Don't count the Pirates out just yet. A whole nother quarter coming up. Final snap perhaps here of the third. Under pressure. Airs it out. Downfield. And this ball is intercepted. The Bulldogs defense forcing the turnover. And coming down with it is Chris Adams. And Chris Adams did a great job because he stayed back. Let no receiver get past him or even even and he's playing center field and he's uh surveying the receivers he's surveying the ball uh the ball comes out high it hangs up for him over everyone but chris adams who makes a great interception as he leaps up in the air falls backward and maintains possession and again the bulldogs have the ball first interception on the year for the redshirt sophomore out of columbia south carolina by the way it's a busy day here in the Palmetto State, a SEC game underway over in Columbia. And a first down here for the Bulldogs as Traquan DeBose calls in another one. Yeah, and I think that's going to take us to the fourth quarter, but a great pitch and run. You don't have to throw the ball far. Get the ball into the hands of the playmaker and uh, let him run upfield. So they trade touchdowns in the third quarter. We're down to the final 15 minutes of regulation when we come back to Orangeburg, South Carolina, here on Flow Football. And a lot of the community coming out to support the Bulldogs for their final home game here in 2017. And this would be a lot of confidence going into the offseason. Obviously, one more game left on the schedule for South Carolina State. They'll go to Savannah State, a team they blanked last year, 32-0. Uh, so a chance possibly to string some wins together. Now, obviously, this one is not all sewn up. Though the Bulldogs able to get the football back after the interception by Chris Adams. And it sets up this offense for South Carolina State that has run so well today. Yes. And we're going to go with the Wildcat, or pardon me, this will be Dewan Ford, your quarterback today for South Carolina State. And the stable of running backs, Jarius Jenkins gets the first touch, the redshirt freshman here in the fourth quarter. Good push up front. And uh, Savannah State, the fighting Shannon Sharps. This is a conference full of programs that have produced some pretty notable names. Of course, Tariq Cohen most recently in the NFL draft is last year to the Chicago Bears for North Carolina a &T. Near sideline and flags will fly. They were looking for Josh Williams. Good choice to go downfield right there. And uh, Josh Williams with a good move on the sideline. And uh, the best thing you do there in college, especially if you're a defensive back, is just go ahead and hold them up because there's no sense of giving up a 60-plus-yard 60, 60 touchdown when you can just take the 15 and say, hey, I got beat on a very good move uh, by the wideout. So again, the infraction on Robert Scott, the sophomore. Into pirate territory for the Bulldogs. A couple touchdowns on the ground, one through the air today for this offense. And easy sledding up the middle as they go back to Datron James. Yeah, but a good running uh, by this Bulldog offense all day. Lincoln and that offensive line doing an excellent job here on senior day. Uh, nothing but green pastures. And if the rusher possibly could stay up on his feet, maybe even more yards. But uh, you cannot be disappointed with six yards a pop. Uh, the up-tempo play that we spoke about with the Hampton Pirates, they were averaging over 5.1 yards a play coming into this contest, and not so uh, for the South Carolina Bulldogs, but today it looks like the Bulldogs are upping that yard per play. They'll need just a long three yards here. Now it'll get even longer as James is swallowed up. And 
Again, the man responsible is Obasui, who I mentioned had ten and a half tackles for loss coming into today. Well, uh, good job there by the Hampton Pirates and their defensive line, and it's going to be uh, a longer, uh, not as manageable third down, probably third and about seven now, Lincoln, because of the good upfront push by the Hampton defensive line that just busted into the backfield of the Bulldogs and drops the yard, uh, the ball carrier for a multiple yard loss. Need the 37 yard line for the first down. Ford has time. Receiver runs around beyond that first down marker. So when he comes back and the catch is made ultimately by Shade Wald, it's still going to be a first down. Move the sticks and keep this drive moving. Yeah, really good play there. Uh, you don't have to get greedy. Just get past the sticks and play pitch and catch and right there. You have a big target uh, making a really nice catch. Uh, and now you've got the ball first down and 10 again. And uh, here come the Bulldogs marching down the field against Hampton uh, about 14 yards until they're back in the red zone. And we've been saying that all contest. And uh, uh, these seniors, I guess, want to go out here. They probably have got a lot of folks coming in town. But uh, this is a very spirited team of Coach Flu. James is the running back. And he'll get a couple or swallowed up by the Pirates. Well, the good thing here, again, even if you gain two, maybe three yards, not the four that uh, I always try to measure an offense by on a first down play, the points are in your favor. You mentioned three scores, up 19. Now you just want to work against the clock, and when you do the running plays, Lincoln, you can let the play clock run down. You can get 30, 40 seconds a pop, and that bodes well for the Bulldogs because they have all the points conceptually they need right now. Ford gets everybody on the same page here on second and nine. Needing the 22 to keep moving the sticks. Ford has the option. Back to Morris, and they may have been better off just keeping it as everybody was there for the Pirates, the entire defensive team photo. Yes, but you know, here's the thing. As long as you don't turn the ball over, I know it's not fun to get the minus eight, and yeah, at first, it looked like it was going to get real crazy. Just take the loss, because even if it's third and a mile, which it's only really third and 12 or 13, that's not a mile, and if you punt, or if you try a long field goal, you still possess the ball, and you're taking time off the clock. And right now, the clock is your best, uh, biggest friend if you're a Bulldog fan. So third and 13 for Ford. He will drop back to pass. A little bit of pressure airs it out, and will just throw it away, and that means fourth down. No problem. Bring out your punter. Have him pooch it inside the 20. Let the ball bounce. You've got the clock under 10 and a half conceptually after that punt. And uh, you just move, you know, you move methodically back into your defense. You've given the defense a rest because you picked up a couple first downs, even if you lost yards and then penalties. That's enough rest uh, for a defense who's up three scores to get back on the field and give their opponents a, a lot of grief, which they've been doing all day. Benjamin punting from midfield. End over end. And that one took a right turn just in time. Great punt. Again, inside the 10 is excellent. And you make the Pirates go virtually the length of the field. And even if they do that, they take six minutes off the clock. They're still going to be down two scores with only four minutes left to play. And this South Carolina State team today has moved the ball well. It's got to energize your defense when they know they're going to come out and the offense is going to be right on the edge of its own end zone. It's a chance for them to put points on the board. They've already done it once today. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, again, they're jazzed up. You said so much going on. Veterans Day weekend, senior day. I got the high schools coming in. You know, all those bands playing uh, halftime. So there's a lot of pageantry and festivities going along uh, around and surrounding this football game. And I think it all benefits, especially when uh, the home team plays well. That's South Carolina State today, and they're up 26 to 7. They're having some fun. The Bulldogs on their home turf one final time here in 2017. It hasn't always gone their way this season. They've lost some heartbreakers. 
Now they're trying to go out in style and if they can shut down these Pirates another drive here that Hampton is backed up a lot of pressure on their offense here snapping the ball in their own six out of his own end zone and ball is caught and recognizing he was going to be hit Ronald Bell goes down again we're back to Brendan Green at quarterback the number two signal caller coming into today it's his second drive in at quarterback here today looks left the entire way over the top under thrown and a battle for the football was it incomplete caught or intercepted well interestingly enough there's going to have to be a determination that's made uh, good that uh, Hampton did not give up on the play but I think this ball was intercepted and once the player was down on the turf you can't really take the possession away if that was uh, so deemed an interception it, you imagine it's either intercepted or incomplete right Second interception today for South Carolina State. As Alex Brown with his third pick on the year. Yeah, and I, I think because he was on the ground, he had, had possession. The moment he has possession for a split second, the ball's down. Yes. And again, no replay. It'll stay with South Carolina State without review. I think that's the right call. Um, as much as I applaud uh, an offensive receiver fighting for the ball all the way, um, this ball right there, as we see on the replay, goes to the defense. It's, it's over. Morris with the run. He's happy with his yard. That's all you need right now is to allow that clock to tick. It's under 10 minutes in this fourth quarter. And... 19 points as you uh, have mentioned a yeah, three score ball game a touchdown would make it a four score ball game a field goal still three possessions Pirates defense needs to come up with a big play See, they're taking that clock all the way down Pirates sell out. Ball is loose. Pirates look to scoop and score. They'll settle with the scoop at midfield as landing on this ball is Steven Smith. They were all coming for it. I think that's more of uh, air uh, and coming in the, in the wind coming out of it's Austin Ruger. Yeah. The big fullback. The hit that created all was Raheem Husky. It was his helmet that forced a fumble earlier today. And that's the break perhaps the Pirates need with a little over nine minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Well, if they're going to make it interesting, it is. Because right now, like I said, you can joust if you are the South Carolina Bulldogs and just trade possessions. Uh, you can trade touchdowns what they did in the third quarter and you still maintain that three possession lead. Let's step aside. 9-12 to go in the fourth. Pirates with the football at midfield looking for a comeback here in the MEAC. Well, another ball put on the turf today by South Carolina State. Now, the score does not reflect the inability to protect the football, in part because now they've forced two turnovers of their own. Hampton airs it out, and that one into traffic, looking to connect with Knight. Uh, but coverage again from Alex Brown. And that was very wobbly. Uh, did not come out of the hand well. Uh, and it was pretty much an up for grabs ball, not a 50-50 ball. You talk about a 50-50 ball when the receiver has a uh, good enough chance to go up against the defender. That one was just wobbly, and uh, anybody could have gotten that one. Had it been uh, just thrown a little more to the inside, it would have been uh, possibly intercepted. And they're back to Williams at quarterback. Pass down the middle, and he connects with Ronald Bell. Ronald Bell has done a great job running 
uh, some really good routes today and uh, has uh, been rewarded. Um, not a tall receiver, Lincoln, but again, you don't have to be tall if you're in the right spot. First and 10. And that just took too long. Johnson will be stopped Johnson for a loss. Yeah, I got swallowed up from the backside. The defensive line of uh, the Bulldogs coming uh, to the aid of the secondary there. And right now, second and there was a loss of three on that play. 19-point ball game. You can do it with two touchdowns, two two-point conversions, and a field goal. Ball is stripped. Bulldogs have it. They take it right back. The strip and the fumble recovery all single-handedly by Bruce Johnson. Bruce Johnson did a heck of a job coming off the left side uh, for uh, the Bulldogs. Beats his man, grabs the ball, and wisely, once he finds it, just protects it with his entire body until the whistle's blown. Knows he can get up then because nobody's going to have any debate about is it theirs, is it Hampton's. It is the South Carolina. Carolina State Bulldogs ball, and there's been a lot of turnovers created uh, during this Saturday's competition. Sack, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery all right there thanks to the left hand of Bruce Johnson, and it's back over to the Bulldogs. And it's right back to Morris, and his job again, just protect the football. And he's just, you know, again, this is a methodical opportunity for the offense. Take 35, 40 seconds uh, per rush. You don't have to hurry this game up anymore. Uh, you got pulling tackles, and that's what uh, springs uh, these rushers uh, for the Bulldogs. Morris has space. Morris with two touchdowns today down the sideline and out of bounds just short of the 15-yard line. Great run uh, off a left tackle, and then he just made it a foot race. Got to the sidelines. The angle was there for Hampton. Uh, their secondary guys are fast, but uh, that's a 40, 30-yard game. LeBron Morris, the sophomore, with a career day. I'd say 30-plus yards. And uh, don't ever want to cheat my fellow uh, rushing mates. Uh, but, you know, that's what you want right now. 7.51 left in this game and driving. And again, no surprise, they keep it on the ground. They're able to get past one tackler, Jarius Jenkins. I'll take a hit at the end. Oh, I, I like to see this. This is smart. Now you just, yeah, the clock is truly your friend. You're almost to the red zone, and you've got three rushers that are excited to see if they can get in the red zone and then to pay dirt. Arian Carr finally with the stop, the Washington, D.C. native for the Pirates. Second and seven. That'll be third down coming up. Let's grind it out. Grind it out. Again. You want to hear that tick, 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 tick if you're the South Carolina State Bulldogs because right now uh, you have enough points. Now you want to work that clock. Bulldogs trying to extend this advantage. A touchdown would likely help them seal a victory on senior day. You're absolutely right. And uh, right now at the 10-yard line, third and probably a long four, third and five. The sophomore quarterback forward. Flag will come in the backfield. All this likely will be a moot point. He'll get out of bounds. And we'll get the announcement here in a moment. Again, it's still taking time off the clock. Even if you have to move the uh, Bulldogs back. Um, remember, a 49-yarder almost made it over the crossbar and hit the crossbar and came back. So if you're within uh, field goal range, you would suspect. We don't know what this next play will bring after the holding call. And you see the hold. Uh, what led to the call. And that'll push the Bulldogs back. They're more concerned with just still possessing this football. Taking as much time off that clock as possible. That's absolutely right. That, that plays right into... Uh, South Carolina State's plan at this time and that's we don't need to be in a hurry we just need to be uh, ball control savvy and then also let the clock do its thing 
They'll pass on third and 15. And right into some traffic. It'll fall incomplete. Fourth down coming up. And he is looking to dial up Cordell Johnson. Cordell Johnson probably had an opportunity. Uh, he's looking back into the sun. Uh, ball was hung up uh, for an opportunity to make a touchdown catch, but nonetheless, look, you're okay if you're the Bulldogs. You haven't turned the ball over, and uh, you may be able to come in and get a field goal here, Lincoln, uh, with uh, the leg of their special teams. One for two today on field goals. Remember, they missed one right before halftime off the crossbar. It's Kandrit. Now 10 of 12 this year, or making 10 of 13 this year, and they had blown the whistle before the kick. And it is a timeout on South Carolina State. So it'll be a 37-yard try for Scandrit and the Bulldogs looking to stretch their lead when we come back to Orangeburg, South Carolina. Bulldogs called the last time out. Again, a chilly day here in November. We started in the low 50s. You see a slight wind on those flags on the uprights. From 37 yards. And on the day, one for three on field goal tries for Tyler Scandrit. That's okay. I remember a 19-point lead. And, you know, you're just trying to add to it at the end of your possessions, but you've taken time off the clock. It took time down to 548 to go here in the fourth quarter. Lincoln Rose, Steve Foster with you. Steve, the former running back for the Princeton Tigers, played his high school ball over there in El Paso. At one city in Texas in its own time zone. Yeah, you know, we, uh, we do it big over there, but uh, West Texas has uh, had a lot of prominent uh, Athletes go on and do well in several sports. Well, prominent Princeton, you had not just that Jason Garrett guy, but D Superman, Dean Kane. Yes. Again, there you are back to Green at quarterback. And the Pirates are going to have an uphill battle after a couple of turnovers that plagued them. Uh, most recently, a sack fumble by Bruce Johnson on the last drive in midfield. I want to say definitely. Uh, kudos to this South Carolina State Bulldogs defense uh, During senior day they have stepped up mightily and only surrendered seven points to the Hampton Pirates Empty backfield with five wide we'll throw it over towards the Pirates sideline And Pirates play Howard next week back at home it looks as though they will be on track today to picking up just their third loss in the MEAC. North Carolina A&T was the class of the conference coming into today. Still perfect at 6-0, a couple of 5-1 and teams behind them, including Howard. And North Carolina Central, always a fun league to watch. Meanwhile, tucking it down, Williams. Between the hash marks, finally will pop it out a bit. Close to midfield, up to the 43-yard line. And uh, five minutes left to go on the scoreboard there. And it just, you know, contained now because, again, you're just trying to work through this fourth quarter. Jason Baxter finally had the tackle. This is an incomplete pass. Second and 10 coming up. Last year, it was a 28-26 to win for Hampton. That snapped an eight-game losing skid for the Pirates to the Bulldogs. Again, Bulldogs have historically have had great success. 14 conference titles in their history. And again, the alumnus Buddy Pugh in his 16th year as a head coach. And they will give five yards to the Pirates here. Second and five coming up. But it's a South Carolina State offense averaging 20 points a ball game. They've already eclipsed that average. With the 26 today, their defense holding teams to 17 points has uh, excelled. Yes, I think uh, on both sides of, of the ball, the uh, offense has extended its points per game and the defense has clamped down on uh, how many points they allow their opponents. On second and five, 
Never going to get rid of it. The sack from this Bulldogs defense that we had been bragging about. As Tiberius Cravens gets to him. That's a great name. And that was a great play, too. A lot of uh, pushing and getting past the offensive lineman to the backfield. So uh, that's an A play in my book. And I uh, love the effort given. They need the 47 yard line. We'll try to get it with his feet. Unable to get it across midfield. Need the Bulldogs 47. It'll be fourth, and you've got to go for it here if you're playing for the win. Obviously down three scores, not a lot of time. No, and, you know, I think if you're playing for pride as well, I mean, you, you say you can put the ball away and, and change the field position, but right now with 438 to go in the fourth, you're, you're trying to uh, build for the next game, and right now you got to man up and see if you can get this first down. Quick release, first down. Pirates will continue their drive into Bulldogs territory. As able to move the sticks, Alden Knight comes through. Good play there, nice pitch and catch. Again, a I mean, manageable throw, about 12 to 15 yards. Those are the patterns I love because really if you do them well, they're unstoppable. Another quick strike, this time incomplete, trying to quickly find Ronald Bell. Second and 10 coming up. South Carolina State closed well in the middle of the field there to break up that pass. So uh, they're still playing defense are the Bulldogs and the Pirates trying to get at least another score on the scoreboard before uh, this game goes to zeros. Three and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Under pressure again. Able to get rid of it. And that ball tipped and ultimately almost intercepted by two different Bulldogs. The second of which, Jason Baxter. Man, that was good effort there. And uh, wise choice by Darius Leonard to hold up. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Not hit the quarterback. That would have been an automatic 15. And, you know, you just don't want the momentum to be uh, lost here. Uh, a great effort so far on senior day by the South Carolina State Bulldogs. And Darius Leonard being a senior, uh, he certainly doesn't want to take away uh, from this meaningful day, his last senior day uh, that he'll see in this uniform. So third down for Williams. Needs the 27-yard line to keep it going. Never had a chance and so much for Mr. Nice Gun. Well, that's when you wanted to do what you needed to do. That was legal. Darius Leonard coming through. It looked like a linebacker blitz. Uh, no, nobody blocks him. Comes through the A-gap between the center and the left guard. And uh, immediately deposits the quarterback on the turf. The number one tackler in this program's history all time. Yes. And he came through with a lick. Here are his final day to suit up at Dawson Stadium. And tuck it down. Looking for that first down. Going to have it and cannot stay in bounds. Williams, though, will keep things going for the Pirates. Well, that's a, a first down picked up and a good effort there. Oh, no. Maybe does. Yes, he does pick up the first down. Good, good run there. Well, what's the. We had a flag against South Carolina State. I will add that yardage, taking us inside the 10 to the 9-yard line, half the distance to the goal. Well, they may have never uh, had the opportunity to shake the flags, but so far you have more points than your opponent here on senior day, uh, even though the Pirates now inside the 10, comfortably in the red zone, Lincoln. And had him in the end zone at a step on the defender, but Bell just cannot haul in the pass from Williams. Yeah, and again, uh, a good pattern run. I think the ball was slightly deflected by uh, the second level linebacker there um, for the Bulldogs, but that ball still made it into the breadbasket of the receiver. It should have been 
caught for a touchdown. Williams has time. All the time he needs. Had his receiver, but the lick on Alden Knight will jar the ball loose. Yes. Yes, it did. And uh, Alden Knight had the football. You can hardly blame him. The moment he hauls this in, a lick from the backside as it is popped out. The jarring shot from Deshaun Taylor. Deshaun Taylor's been all over the field today. And uh, right there, he just ensures that the ball is not going to be possessed to the ground. Uh, it was a good shot. It was towards uh, the back part of the receiver once uh, the ball was touched by that receiver. And uh, he just cleans up uh, the mess in the middle of the end zone. I mean, third and goal coming up. Thought he had it. And then he didn't. And, you know, from this angle, it may look like it's going helmet to helmet. It's not. Uh, the left forearm uh, was used to jar the ball loose. Yeah, right into the back. Exactly. And then um, the body comes through, so it looks like it's, uh, if, if you're looking at it, uh, helmet to helmet. But it wasn't. It was a very good play there by uh, the second-level linebacker. And uh, touchdown averted. Touchdown reception averted uh, due to uh, the hard play of the Bulldogs in their secondary. Third and goal from the nine coming up. It's some big hits. Yeah, and, and again, that's this game uh, deals with big hits. That was a, a legal big hit, and uh, it was against a guy who's uh, strengths on a football field more speed and not size and so pays the price because of it Williams hands off Johnson Johnson with speed around the corner Johnson is in Yaki Johnson for the sixth time this year puts his speed to use the senior is in for the score yeah, and it's, it's hard to stop because you can't coach or teach that that's just God given and that's the jet sweep and that's a about as good as a jet sweep as you can see and get and right there that's just a foot race and two beats everybody around the corner and they have done the math then we'll go for two here he's not you saw the graphic he's not six foot two just wanted you to know that five seven yes and when somebody puts five seven on a roster that usually means uh, maybe high five. High five and a half. <laughs> Williams in zone. Two more points on the board. It's now an 11 point ball game. Still two scores. And we expect to see an onside kick coming up for the Pirates. Let's see if uh, there's a flag. If there is. It's if it's against the Bulldogs. And again you apply that on the onside kick try. Could be interesting, but still two scores, Lincoln Rose, and so that's the important thing. The, try is good. the two After point try. Well, this one goes against Hampton. Yeah, it'll be after the two point try, it'll be applied to the kick. So they will still likely onside kick this ball with the situation here down by two scores and a little over two minutes. They're just going to do it from a little farther back if they happen to recover it. Ball still just has to go 10 yards on the kick. And you have to execute uh, the recovery of the ball no matter if you're kicking it from your 20, your 30, or wherever you're supposed to line up. Parking lot. Exactly. 10 yards, and then you better be the first one there. Well, again, the Bulldogs have overcome some self-inflicted wounds throughout this ball game. Their defense has been constant, including a couple of interceptions today. Buddy Pugh will send the men out. And it's not so much who's the man deep to return, it's who are the men up front. Pirates playing to win, down by two scores. Need to get this football right back here. Yeah, that would. You're seeing they're kicking off from the 20 because of the unsportsmanlike conduct. 
again, it doesn't matter. And I would have my guys, if I were South Carolina, at the 30 because the ball only has to travel 10 yards. Sometimes you'll see the kicker just with a little dribbler. Right. And able to fall on it. Bulldogs have it. And guess who? Yes. Darius Leonard with the football. He could count 10. And uh, he knew uh, because that's on his jersey. And it's also on his shoulder pad. <laughs> so four opportunities to count 10. And then also recover the onside kick. And the fifth year senior grew up in South Carolina. Went to Lakeview High School. Watched his older brother go to Clemson. And Sean go on to the NFL. I did not have that chance at Clemson. And a young man as a high school player who dominated as an all-everything. He could line up at quarterback or anywhere else you need him. Put on some weight and excels as one of the top defensive players the MIAC has known over the past several years. And, of course, they trusted him on the hands team there. Well, again, you mentioned a former offensive player. And, I, and, and he has a look that he could actually probably step in and play quarterback as well. You love versatility, especially in the game of football or, or any sport, because then it allows you to do more with one player. It's almost like having two or three players out there at once because, you know, a lot of defenders that cover don't necessarily catch the ball. Well, well if you play an offense and you can catch the ball, then when you're covering, uh, you can take the ball away. Right now, it looks like there's a timeout on the field link. So an 11-point ball game as the Bulldogs' offense will have it charged with taking the final two plus minutes off of that clock and sending these seniors out in style. A senior class anchored by Darius Leonard. And for the Pirates, they came in four and two in the MIAC, one of the better teams. And the Bulldogs simply on defense were able to get that ball back several occasions for their offense and the offense's running game uh, was clicking here today. That was, and, uh, you know, that's just good old-fashioned uh, want to. And uh, want to worked for the Bulldogs today, and they created a lot of running lanes uh, for ball carriers today. And, and they're still going to do it with two minutes and nine seconds left in the fourth. Juan Ford looking to help close this one out. The carry from Trayvon Thomas, the sophomore running back. He's about the fifth young man to carry the football today out of the backfield for the Bulldogs. Nothing wrong with that. As long as you maintain and keep possession, uh, you can go forward as much as you like. Sometimes when you're up like you are, uh, 26 to 15, up by 11, going backwards, not going to hurt you because, again, the clock is the one that you want to now have help. And Hampton, of course, is going to use its timeouts here. Try to get a stop and get the football back. Down by two scores. Not willing to concede this matchup just yet. No, I wouldn't. I mean, you, you just never know. And, and you want to play hard enough that uh, you can keep building. And that's the whole point of playing a season. It's not a one-and-done uh, series. And you don't know what's going to happen in front of you if you're the Hampton Pirates. Um with other teams and so uh, they've got to be prepared uh, to play the rest of the season and right now uh, another penalty from the referee maybe a legal substitution I'm not sure unsportsmanlike conduct, conduct against Hampton and the Bulldogs so much for that stop on the last play by Hampton this is going to be a first down the Bulldogs will move close Bulldogs Obviously, uh, another score would help end this, but gives them a another snap to run time off the clock and force Hampton to chew through their timeouts. Right, and I'm not certain what that penalty was a result of, but nonetheless, it moves the ball inside the 15. It appeared to come from the sideline. Still has it. They probably aren't looking for a run out of bounds there from Ford, but... It's unlikely going to cost them the ball game. Well, now you want, as you mentioned, you want to use those, uh, have those timeouts used. They'd probably rather he just take a knee before reaching the sideline. I wouldn't disagree with that uh, plan as well, but uh, you have moved. Well, of course, with uh, several years ago, they changed the rules here down the stretch, and so they do wind the clock in motion. 
And now our officials coming together about how much time should be on that clock. And the moment that clock started to move, Hampton then presumably wanted its second time out. Well, because South Carolina State was certainly going to let that play clock run down, and the game clock was moving with the play clock. So it's a game that started with a safety. Of course, that was after the first turnover by the Bulldogs early on, but a safety for the Bulldogs. Their offense would then punch it in twice on the ground with LeBron Morris scoring his first two touchdowns with South Carolina State this year. We would see a touchdown toss from Dwan Ford. Your three touchdowns today, a field goal along the way from Scandrit, who is one for three today. Now Hampton would get a touchdown throw from Delman Williams as well. And spinning still on his feet. Nice run. Clock will move. Unless Hampton wants to use its timeout. As again, the carry from Trayvon Thomas. And good movement up front by the offensive line. And uh, a nice little quick cut and cover up of the football. And that's what you want to see here. Uh, clock now running down inside a minute 20. And you can be very deliberate here. You don't need any more points. What you just want to do is possess this football uh, till the clock runs out to all zeros. Ford will hand off to the youngster, who's going to still be a yard shy. Again, another carry by Thomas. You may be able to just take a knee from here and get in the victory position. Uh, these guys have played hard. Uh, they're going to be great uh, on senior night, senior day, turning tonight. And uh, the win will be secured by the Bulldogs here in Orangeburg, South Carolina. So second and goal from the two. I could take a knee. I don't even know um, why you wouldn't just come around your quarterback and they'll let the time melt away in that victory position. And back into the end zone again on the ground. This time it's Trayvon Thomas. As they are excited for the young sophomore, that should do it for the Bulldogs. We are going to pick up that elusive second win in the MEAC this year at the expense of the Pirates. Good lead block in the hole. And, uh, you just choose which way you want to go to get into the big letters. And uh, as you mentioned, another score for the Bulldogs. Extra point coming up. And perfect on the day, four for four. And again, South Carolina State with some positives to build on. Moving into the finale against Savannah State on the road next week. Well, again, another red zone score, and that really uh, is something that I, I tell you, I thought really st stood out to me when I, I looked over and assessed what was going on with such uh, close losses by this Bulldog team. And uh, when you put the ball into uh, the 10 yards with the big letters, uh, things can change in a hurry for you. And uh, on senior day, uh, th that's what you got, Lincoln. I mean, you, you really got the full appreciation of the ability of the Bulldogs to score and put up points. And again, um, you give them 14 points and spread it across their season, and uh, their wins and losses look a lot different. So Trayvon Thomas putting the punctuation on this one with that last touchdown run. And the Bulldogs will kick it away with 18 seconds separating them from the victory here on their final home game. Pirates will give themselves the full 18 or 17 seconds to close this one out. It was a good effort 
uh, by the Bulldogs today, Lincoln, uh, as they um, come now for the last 16 seconds. You just want to protect. Uh, you don't want any type of long Hail Mary type score. Although, uh, right now, I think the only people that would have any um, necessity to, of trying to figure out the point spread <laughs> is not, they're not in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Darius Leonard, how else would he rather close out his career than lining up with his defensive teammates out there on the field here on Senior Day? Looking to seal up a victory, and Hampton will concede this one. 33-15, to 15, the Bulldogs of South Carolina State will win this one at home. A MEAC victory going the way of Buddy Pugh's Bulldogs. He's 11 away from being the all-time winningest coach in South Carolina State history. But there's 11 seconds yeah, still. The, uh, the clock, <laughs> clock was slightly off. There will be one more snap. And that one will do it. So the Bulldogs will beat the Pirates. Hampton with a tough test on the road today. Not your standard one-win team in the MEAC. As again, coaches Canyon and Pugh will come together. So familiar with one another over the years. And of course, Darius Leonard playing his final game here at home. Good looking football player. And Leonard, such a memorable player to follow here in his time in Orangeburg, South Carolina. All-time leading tackler for South Carolina State. And really a leader for this group. Bulldogs prevail, and they'll have the rest of Saturday to enjoy this one. Yes, they will, and a well-deserved, well-earned win here on Senior Day. And uh, again, they saluted the veterans, so they uh, certainly uh, brought the patriotism as well. You see all the family members wearing the number 10 here to support Leonard, the local kid. And, well... You know he would have loved to lift a trophy tonight, but would you settle for a ring? Wow. He's doing it all. So All of his teammates in on the act as perhaps the future Mrs. Leonard. Yes, she gets the flowers. Uh, everybody wants to be part of this, and she turns around and thinks she realizes. And it just sunk in. He was in on the all-hands team. <laughs> he was. Those hands are about to offer up a ring and a proposal. He got the yes. He got the yes. It was going to be a memorable day no matter what for Darius Leonard. A best of luck to them in their future. He's got one more day to wear the number 10 on his back next week. And he'll do it with a fiance looking on one week from today. Bulldogs win it at home here in their final home game in Orangeburg for the 2017 campaign. A big thank you to our entire Flow Football crew. For Steve Foster, I'm Lincoln Rose. The Bulldogs carrying momentum into the final week, looking to finish 2017 in style.
The only thing I hate more than losing is paying unnecessary interest on my mortgage. With a 15-year fixed-rate mortgage, you can pay off your loan quickly and save a ton of money in interest.